Hello, everybody. I think I'm almost ready to get started. Let's chat. Like we had a couple of recent followers. Welcome in Pyramidor, hope you're doing well. I believe we just finished the second case of the game. And we're going in fresh to the third one. Apparently there's two achievements in this case, and that's all I know about it. I, I made the notes on that like oh, two weeks ago, and I don't remember. <laughs> I have even less context than normal for those. So I just know that they don't do anything at the beginning. And when we start getting into the trial, I'll look them over one time. More Phoenix right into you. Hope you're doing well, Kurt. So thank you again for Super Sapphire for the follow. Yeah, I guess, uh... I don't know what the case is about. We'll find out, I guess. Pause the music. I'm pretty sure I don't- I don't even remember who was on the title of it. I honestly could not tell you anything about this. We took a small break. Wasn't feeling the best last week, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Just got home a little bit ago from celebrating a friend's birthday. Nice. It's right in a moment. It'll- it'll realize I wanted to boot up. Food and board games is always a nice combination. Speaking of which, what to do one of those again soon? On stream and otherwise. You're wide open. I'm gonna say the moment of truth. Will it load the game? Hmm. Give me one second, chat. It does seem very stubborn about this game for some reason. See if this fixes it. There we go. It remembered eventually. The three recipe for turnabout, part one investigation. So we didn't even view the intro. Game loading true test. Yeah, I had some issues with OBS uh, last week. I literally stripped down the entire stream elements plugin from the uh, OBS because I got tired of it crashing. That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. It wasn't me. I, I swear it wasn't me. The evidence and testimony we've seen and heard are conclusive. The victim was alone at his table when he drank from that poisoned coffee cup. No, you're wrong. I know what I saw. I saw... I saw... I don't know who's speaking. I see a ghost. saw someone else there. A man, he's the real killer. Oh, the coffee cup poisoner. Allegedly. Yeah, I'm a ghost, pretty much. Why won't anyone believe me? There's Winston Payne. Well, I'd say that pretty much wraps up this case, wouldn't you? Mr. Wright? Bang. This court finds the defendant. Guilty. This court is adjourned. Bang. I was gonna say, I just, I just got hit by a whole bunch of things. I was expecting it to go more through an intro rather than automated text. Let me, let me get a moment to rehydrate. I literally was reaching for water, and then it was like, bam, a bunch of text. I think that's the first one we've ever had where it didn't just do a cinematic in the beginning. Usually they have like little flashes of stuff, and then they have text, but that one went just straight to the text. Your case was fast, can't wait for the fourth, pretty much. January 6, 10.03 a.m., right in company law offices. Ah. The start of a new year always makes me feel like I could take on the whole world. I bet it does, Maya. Ugh. 
Man chat. This character gets less endearing. <laughs> Every case. I, I think I was mostly fine with her in the first game, but man. She is uh, testing some patience between the second and the third game. Let's read her, read her sentence al aloud and Chad will probably figure out which words specifically I'm not excited to see in her dialogue. So, I decided that our resolution should be... Zavari, take on the world! What do you think? Sure, whatever, Maya. But I think maybe you've had more than enough mistletoe cake. Mistletoe cake? Never. Gotta eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching the fireworks on TV. Or playing a board game. I'm still hung up by mistletoe cake, I'm not gonna lie. I- I'm assuming they just mean a Christmas cake. I- I've not really heard it called mistletoe cake before. I'm, I'm just kinda thrown off by it. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe. Happy New Year, Detective! Yeah, I know, I know, that's why I was like, you kiss under the mistletoe is like the thing around here, but you don't, you don't normally make a cake that's a mistletoe. That's where I'm a little, I'm a little lost there. Maybe it's just a tradition thing. Um, likewise. Now listen up, right? I wanna... Here's to another fruitful year of lawyer-police cooperation. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. All right, pal, you've got some explaining to... Have you got a present for me, detective? Welcome, Chris. Yeah, she talked about a mistletoe cake, and I literally just stared blankly at it. I'm like, I'm sure it's a thing. I'm not gonna say it's not. I've just not heard of it before. Or at least it referred to it in that sense. A what? Well, I, um... Here, have this. It's really nothing much, but... Yay, thanks! Look, pal, we need to talk. Take a seat. Hey, what about Pearly? You haven't forgotten about her present, have you? Hope you're doing well, Chris. Uh, no, I, I mean, yes, I mean, no. Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> yes, I'm busted. How did you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. Now let's see you think how funny it is when I show you this. What is it? A magazine? Hey, I want to see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney Wright trounced. Trounced? Let me see that. Defense attorney gave an almost childlessly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for ruling in this case. Well, don't tell me you don't remember anything about it. I don't remember anything about it. Where's that issue from, anyway? Um, December last year. Which I guess makes it last month. Makes it old news, you mean. I feel like going... What, what, wait, did they say January and I just missed it? I thought they said October. Can chat double check or just skim slightly back for earlier in the VOD? What, what day did they say today's date was? I saw the 10.06 AM. I didn't realize we skipped forward that far much, far in time. Anyway. Childishly amateur is painting Phoenix better than he is, that's true. Sorry you didn't get more rest though, Chris. Hopefully you get more rest soon. Hmm. What do you think this is all about, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way. You don't mean... A fo... A phony, Nick? This must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. Let's see starting off the year with one, too. Magazine clipping added to the court record. So, what are you gonna do about it, pal? What do you mean, what am I gonna do about it? Well, it's your fault the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. My fault? How do you figure that? Because THE Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. 
Gia, yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full of yourselves? I didn't do anything wrong. At least, not that I can remember. You better make this right, pal, now! I mean, taking the case back to court, got it? Oh my gosh, chat, a retrial? Wait a minute. How does that factor into evidence law? Sounds like we got our first case of the new year. Let's tackle it with gusto. No, no. Judge already issued a guilty verdict once in the case. Not gonna be easy to get it overturned. Guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So you're taking the case, right? Good! I'm gonna head over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll go back to the precinct. Drop by if you need something, okay, pal? I guess people are starting to know the name Phoenix Wright. The client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation. I guess I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of guy would do that? I guess we'll talk to her about what to do. So, what's our first move? I guess we go back to down to the detention center and talk. Wait a sec, Nick. This person's behind bars because of you. Evil Phoenix Wright counterpart. Oh, Nick's right? Maybe. Whoever is, whoever it is isn't going to be jumping at the chance to meet you, right? Hey, hey, let's get one thing straight. It wasn't me. It was a fake me that did this. Hmm. I think he looks exactly like you. You're phony. Zin Ihop, I mean. Aw, uh, his name backwards. I hope not. And what kind of name for an evil double is Zin he he hop anyway. Oh, Nick, I've got it! When asked whether I got a twin brother, the answer's no. Spoil sport. Ask her about any ideas. Did you notice Gumshoe was acting weirder than usual, or was it just me? What do you mean? I mean, he was really worked up. Like a guy who's just found out he's gonna be a dad or something. Yeah, I guess he was acting kinda strange. Maybe he realized he's got strong feelings for you, Nick. Consider how we interact. I seriously doubt that, Maya. Well, if he wasn't nervous because of you, maybe it's because of our new guilty client? What do you think of this badge? So you still got that badge, I see. Huh? Well, I'm a lawyer, aren't I? Yeah, but I guess I just didn't think you'd keep on being one for this long. I have to admit, you've had some close brushes with death because of your job. Fail to see how being a lawyer is more dangerous than channeling dead people. And he's spelling his hair in first edge, now comes to. I also don't know about that. I guess we'll go to the detention center. Oh yeah, maybe it did say January 6th. I don't know why I thought that said another month. Detention center, visitor's room. This is so nerve-wracking, waiting to meet our new client. I'm just what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. Get down, Maya. What kind of talk could ruin me? Ah! Oh. It's the... It's the better assistant that deserves better. Oh! Oh, I think I blocked this out of my mind. That's right, there was the stupid maid outfits. I remember this vaguely now when we saw it a couple weeks ago. Oh boy. Okay, I guess it's a made cafe thing again. Well, anyway, I, I liked her better as a police officer. I, I'm not, not sure I really appreciate this outfit, to be honest. Also, totally, totally America, not Japan. But definitely America, chat. Oh, how could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? You put me in solitary. I'm unable to stop crying. Aren't you... Yes, I am. I'm totally and utterly let down. Uh, you're... Are you... Don't pretend you don't know me. It's Maggie. Maggie Bird. Maggie Bird. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Make cafes are as American as Mistletoe Cake. That's true. 
Peggy Bird. She's the police woman I defended that one time. He's accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop, too. What are you doing in here? Can I get you a quit? Oh, sure. Very funny. After that fifth-rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? I was gonna say, is he, it, does he have a third-rate deck and he's a fourth-rate duelist? <laughs> is that the order, chat? Number one loser. You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. She's the most normal and sane person I've met since becoming a lawyer. Actually, that's probably true. Uh oh, I see. That's where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. I vaguely remember saying the same exact thing last time. But I don't mind. Which one... What's one more disaster in my life? You sound the real Mr. Wright is here with me. Won't let the world keep me down, sir. Guess we'll ask about her. So, how come you're dressed like that, Maggie? Last year you looked so sharp in that police uniform. Hmm. I was fired after that... incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind one bit. I enjoyed being on the force, but I think it was time for me to move on. So, what do you do now? In the second act of The Life of Maggie Bird, playing the role of a waitress. A waitress? Oh no, that is, um... Uh, area. Yes, in a French restaurant. It's a small place, but it's quite fashionable. A charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me right away, sir. And you got into this mess right away, huh? Yeah, you could put it that way. That's what happened. Waitress, fresh restaurant, definitely, yeah, definitely. This whole mess started on the 3rd of last month. It happened at Tres Bien. I feel like this place was referenced before. I don't know if it was in the second game or earlier in this game. We saw an advertisement for them, I think, on a table somewhere. Tres Bien? Yes. It's a restaurant where good service and a friendly smile are always included. Oh. There were two men at the table, both drinking coffee. And then... One of the men slipped some poison into the victim's cup. Hmm. The victim just took one sip and was gasping for air. Oh, I was so shocked, I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? Keep calling the guy... The victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all. Never even seen the guy before. I was wanting them wearing a scouter from Dragon Ball. I I've learned to stop questioning the Phoenix Wright attire. I've just learned it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Chad, my only hope is that maybe Maya will rest in peace in this episode. Maybe. Oh. Or Mia, I mean. I mean Maya too, honestly. But she wouldn't have had a motive to kill him then, I guess. You say her name, you'll invoke her. That's true. The other man, the killer, you saw him, right? Of course, a good racist must be attentive to the clientele. Why does this suspiciously just look like Phoenix, right? So, you saw the killer. You found you were found guilty of the crime anyway. How come? Honestly, everyone in Phoenix Wright could go rest in peace, that's true. You tell me, Mr. Wright. Ah! This answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. Let me see if I could get a description of the guy. Let's ask about the guilty verdict. So, if you saw the murder, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. So what? The other man. The one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, the customer. Everyone.
The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. Well, I'm gonna guess because of the name pun that maybe the owner strong-armed them into having the same witness testimony. I'm guessing there his name is a pun on the action he did in the case. But I don't have any basis for it. I'm just going on the sense that it's a pun. But how is that possible? I don't know. But nobody, not one person, would believe me, sir. Hmm. Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. What a pathetic defense. My granny could have done a better job. I mean, that, that just sounds like normal. Phoenix Wright, to be honest. Look, that wasn't me, okay? And then... He found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. What? A small bottle. A poison. What? Poison? I it was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. The killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. And no one else saw this other guy. That suspiciously has spiky hair, just like me. No, sir. That's what everyone else said. But I don't see that how they could have missed him. Ask about the other guy. I was the one who took the coffee to the two men. Uh-oh. And what was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I thought they might be in the music industry. Ah, uh, yes. All the music industry people have the uh, scouter thing on their face. That's how they spot talent chat. They're looking for the music power levels of all the other people nearby. It makes sense now, chat. Just gotta think about it. In music? How come? Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece. An emo musician's look about him. An emo musician's look? Okay, I, I, I'm afraid to ask what they think that looks like. There was a sample CD on the table, sir. There we go. What does is, what is the scouter say about his funk level? Yeah, it's definitely over 9,000. The ear pierced in a sample CD, huh? Did you get a look, good look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. Mm hmm. I think it was MC something. They must have been preparing for their debut, I guess. There was a band CD. Maybe a promo disc? I mean, they're telling me that it's a music disc. I'm not gonna believe this is actually music related until they prove me otherwise. Maybe it was MC Screwdriver. It's serious, Maya. Would you buy the CD of a group named that? Uh, what was the name of that group again? MC Hacksaw? No, MC... What about the killer? What did he look like? Well, I, um... I don't really remember. Only that was a young man. Well built like the victim, really. Uh, I guess I could present the... Magazine clipping to see if anything happens. Oh, yeah, I need to ask you about this. Hey, this article's about my case. Can you tell me anything about the guy who is pretending to be me? Yes, sir. The morning after I'd been arrested. Met you in the visitor's room here. We're wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Uh. Hey, Maggie. Is my evil double I am here, too? No. I don't remember a phone of you, Maya. Oh. It would have been so cool. And you got really worked up and passionate. I'm gonna get you cleared just crime, he said. Okay, get the picture. 
You met me in person before. How come you didn't realize the guy wasn't me? I'm half expecting this character to, like, look almost nothing like Phoenix. Dot dot dot. I guess looking back now, it was a little strange. Like, other than the hair, of course. Only a little. Well, okay, you were a bit taller than normal. You looked a bit shady. Your voice was a bit weird. When you had this kind of funny accent, and but the guy was nothing like me then. He had your spiky hair and blue suit. Yeah. It's gonna be ridiculous. Well, I guess there's not really a mystery. It's going to be the character that looked like Phoenix Wright that did it. I mean... As I said before, I, I don't think most of the mysteries in these games are very difficult. So it's literally just gonna be who has the ridiculous Phoenix Wright outfit and that- or basically hairdo and then that's the murderer. Like, I- I don't see this mystery going very deep comparatively. Is it all that takes for someone to imitate me? How about everyone else in the courtroom, like the judge and the observers? Didn't they realize he was an imposter? The judge is blind and senile. I don't think he remembers anybody. Everyone had these big question marks on their faces. It seemed that no one wanted to say anything, sir. This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Mr. Wright, do you think it's possible to get a retrial? Welcome, Dango. Probably. Court ruled in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you think we'll win next time, sir? My life has been a full course meal of bad luck, complete with defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building... Mm hmm. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, even landed a phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. But... I will survive, because Maggie Bird always lives to fight another day. And one day I'll find it. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find that one single moment of good luck. Alright, so clearly they want Bird and uh, the Detective Gumshoe to be a thing. So I guess that's going to be the resolution of the case. It'll be like, my one good... My one moment of good luck was meeting you. And it'll be like, oh. Meanwhile, I'm just like, bleh. <laughs> how I feel about those things, chat. Ugh. Zini Hop is really gonna pay for this. What are you staring at me like that for? Amaya's right. Whoever it is that thought it was a good idea to use my name. Get an innocent girl convicted of murder. Had better watch out. Oh no, please, Maggie could do better than Gumshoe. I don't think it's happening. I'm gonna wait- I'm gonna wait for him to just be asking about her constantly when we go back. We'll find him. Don't you worry, we'll get Zinni Hop for you. Thank you. I'll tell you where Trispian is. Grace, oh right, the restaurant where the murder took place. Yes sir. Here you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure. Alright Nick, let's go check out this restaurant and its food. Let's move to Trispian. January 6th, Trispian. Wow, look at this place! Look, I like smell. What's with the suffocating scent of flowers in here? Oh boy, I see the chef's image on the right side. And again, I was like that kind of thing, right? Hmm. Actually, I'm not all that into it. This 1000% of aid cafe, it definitely is. Dot 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 from Phoenix. I even can't defend it, dot dot dot. 
Someone's coming to see us. Hey, there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. It's a restaurant. It's open for business. Hello? Anyone in here? I don't believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect. Let's get intrusive. Um, okay. There's no one here. Pick anything we want. Well, I guess since I said strong arm, maybe because it's arm strong, maybe it's the reverse. Maybe he was strong armed into agreeing to it. If that's what the chef looks like, chat, I feel like that's probably the case. Yeah, suppose we can. Oh boy. No clues here. There's a newspaper suspiciously behind this. A rack full of fashion magazines. They're all in French. Break some pots for rupees? Yeah, we need to. I'm sure I'm wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my act like clothes, aren't I? fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Hmm? Something stuck behind the rack. Looks like a sports paper to me. Hey, look at this. Someone scribbled a little doodle on one of the pages. MC Bomber? One, two, three, four, five zeros. A hundred thousand dollars? Maybe? Where would NC Bomber is supposed to be? It's paper. From December 3rd. Paper's from the day of the poisoning. Does he bomb for good or for evil? Oh, I'm not sure. We'll find out maybe, chat. What? Where's paper added to the court record? Paper from the day of the murder. This has got to be a clue. if I can find out some more about this paper. Hmm. Yeah. Let's look at the other portions of the room. It's a restaurant front entrance. There's a single hanging door. Oh, excuse me. There's a sign hanging on the door written in French. Probably says open or closed. It must be one or another, but I don't know since I don't know Jack about French. Oh, but it's like spelled like J A C Q U E S. What they did there. Look at all the little trinkets tucked away in here. I bet Mr. Armstrong collected all these personally. Let's see. A bouquet of flowers, some potpourri, and look! Fine bone china cups. Never knew you were so... cultured. Come on, Maya. It's a common knowledge. Any Joe Schmo knows this much. Joe Schmo. Look. One of those magical boxes that spits out money. Wow. You know, you're the only person who would ever describe a, a cash register in that way. Like the blurry painting. It's like everything else is kind of like HD and they're like, no, 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 let this be a blur. Wow, it's a beautiful winter wonderland out there. Really? Cool, I love snow, let me see. Huh? It's not white, it's not even snowing. Got you. It's only kidding, Maya. Nick! For lies that are okay to tell and lies that definitely aren't. All I did was tell an itty bitty white lie about non existent white snow. The table set nicely, it just needs a customer. What do you think this flower is, Nick? Let's see. Well, it'll look like a tulip, and it's not a sunflower, I don't think. Duh, even I could have told you that. Well, those are the only kinds of flowers I know. Dang nab- dang nab it. I'm a lawyer, not a botanist? Why are we- Why are we quoting Star Trek? I, 
There really are just some random cultural references in the translations. This game in particular has been very heavy with them. This restaurant has partitions that separate the tables. When you're seated at a table, you can only see the tables to your right or left. It must be the table where the murder occurred. Udon is confused as usual. I guess so, with all this police tape around it. That stain must be from the poison coffee. Don't go licking the tablecloth, okay, Maya? Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know. Why can't I just picture you doing just that? Oh, we can see the descriptions of the other people. Well, okay. I I guess So so we pretty much already know who did it, so let's let's try to guess let's try to guess about the motive and why these things happened. Can I look at that newspaper thing we had again? It's a mass, mass star to mask, pretty much. Alright, so here's what I'm thinking. So, because... Because Japan doesn't know what normal people look like, I'm assuming because of the fact that he had a scouter on his face, he's probably related to computers... Maybe hacking... Because nobody knows that hackers just look like normal people. So, I imagine... The CD was probably... I mean, it's obviously not a music CD. We, we already know this going into it. So it's probably some kind of program to steal money, or it has some kind of records on it that he could be using for blackmail. Um, I don't know why he was killed yet. I'm missing, like, one piece for that. So... With the ridiculous accent the character had earlier, I wonder if he's supposed to be Mafia? So it could be something like the original person who committed the crime was a gangster because his accent was completely ludicrous a moment ago and they're gonna stereotype him very heavily. So he probably owed money to the mob despite being a mobster for some reason, so we don't know that reason yet. And then the person at the table would have been his out in order to pay back the other people something went wrong and they killed him so he could take the thing that would give him money i'm guessing is what is happening that's what my guess is so far from the very limited information we have i don't know i feel like the bomber thing is going to be misleading i it the, the character comes across as kind of dumb so i'm not going to take this very literally so anyway that's based off the first few clues we've received both in and out of this area we'll see how close that ends up being move forward I just present this to her. Oh, a sports paper. Let's see, let's see. Did Gustin Braun manage to defend his heavyweight title? Guts and Braun, that's a name. Sorry, Maggie. The paper's actually a month old. It's from the day of the murder. Gutson got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. Oh, no. I found this paper in the magazine rack at Trace BN. Really? That's strange. This band doesn't get newspapers. It's almost like somebody brought it there. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. And maybe one of the customers left it behind? Anyway, what I want to take a want you to take a look at is the scribble here. Aha! Uh -huh. That's it, sir. MC Bomber. That was the name that was written on the CD. Just as I thought. I guess it was an MC screwdriver after all, huh? So, that 100,000 must be a down payment for a record deal, right? If someone gave me 100,000, I'd sing for sure. I'm not sure if the 100,000 is exactly money or not. That's also kind of an open statement.
Master Crane or the Spirit Song or even Maya's theme. Uh, okay, Maya. So, if the sample CD was on the victim's table, that means this newspaper may have belonged to the victim. You're right. So, the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think we'd better step up the investigation. Don't you, Nick? Okay. I guess I just go back and hope that somebody's here. January 6th, Trespian. Oh la la, bonjour! Welcome to Las Trespian! Oh, hello! What happened to Maya? She's frozen stiff. Oh no, are we about to be hit with a very offensive character? I mean, I see the character on the right. Take a, a big breath, and I'm gonna hit the confirm button. Uh, yeah. Hundred thousand was the scouter level set at MC Bomber's Funk level. Yeah, that's true. I hate it. I hate Chat with the I hate it. <laughs> mm. This is certainly a thing that we're witnessing. Raw, indeed. It's somehow worse than I could have expected. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Also, I didn't realize he was sleeveless in the portrait, but I could totally see it now that I'm looking at the portrait again. Bien, bien, bien venue? Welcome to my petite restaurante. Huh? The avenue? Oh, none, my petit ch my petit chulo. Huh? Me? Look at this face. Look at this face. Like the kitten rejected by its own mother. You are fatigued, Anon. Alors, you need this. An aromatic bath oil melange of le- oh. I, I can't handle this many accented words, chat. I don't know what some of these are. An aromatic bath oil melange of la neroli and la rose. I don't know what neroli is at all. My personal recommendation. You think I need what? No, I've never taken French, so this is just brutal for me. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> I almost said oi oi, but I think I at least know that one. Just add a couple of drops of this mixture to la bath water and voila! It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for la monsieur. Who? Me? Who gets a face? Like a puppy rejected by life itself. You are fatigued, none? What are you, monsieur? I recommend this. This is the same thing. Oh, different. Oil of Pergamon. Maybe a int of... Wee oui, wee. Oui. I'll add a... The peppermint and la clary sage for a fragrance exceptionnelle. Such an invigorating recipe will... Bring out your delicious beauty, monsieur. My beauty? Lors, you'll be seated. I'll bring you a special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. The lawyers. Us be sure. I know the yes. Oh, I know this is... Oh, man, this is brutal. I know this already, Monsieur. Oof. You're a phoenix, right, nun? Uh, yes. You know me? Friend Charter? Oh, chat, this is gonna be brutal. I'm like, listen. I I know very little French. This is, this is brutal for me. I don't know how they pronounce certain vowel combinations. Other than I recognize it as French. That's about as far as it goes. My sweet wee, never forgot the man who flirts with me, especially in court. I guess he was cross-examined by our mysterious Zinniha. Looks like everyone to do with this case knows who I am already. You know what sort of impressions Zinniha's been leaving on people, don't you? Please don't do that. Allow me to introduce myself to you again. I'm Jean Armstrong, enchante! your arms down. Let's go to Trespian. So what does Trespian mean? I know Tres. That means three, right? No, no, no. Trespian is Francais. In English, you would say, very good. Oh, very good. We oui. exactamente. Atmosphere is Trespian. La cuisine is Trespian. Food's so good. Are there any customers in here? My cuisine is not for all. Some people... They do not appreciate la hot cuisine. Everyone liked hot cuisine. 
since I have lost Maggie. Did not have enough hands. So you're running this place on your own now? We. Oui. For a moment, no one has answered my advertisement. Oh, poor me. Or moi, I think. Please don't eyeball me while you say that. I am Le Chef. I am the manager. I'm also a trained aromatherapist. A roaming what? Practitioner de aromatherapy. The art of soothing Le Soul with the delicate floral aromas. Delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but. Guess I'll ask what happened. I don't think I'll get the answer that I want, though. So, could you tell me what you know about the incident? Yeah. Makes me sad to remember it, yet I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So, it was the third of last month, just one in the afternoon. A man who was in here for a coffee suddenly became ill. Because of the poison in his coffee? That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took this drink to him. I was in the kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came out to see what it was, he already was slumped over in his chair. Oh, between the French and the random missing letters of the accent? Man, this is hard mode chat for me. He was dead? Mon dieu, oui, he was dead. Maggie had passed out also. And this man who died, was he alone? Oui, monsieur. All alone. I know that the Maggie said to hear was someone else was. Was, but, dot dot dot. I see. The police, they asked me many, they asked me many times. Like the girl from Etrian all over again. It's much worse than the girl from Etrian. Are you, sh are you sure there was nobody else at the table, they asked. Oof. But I am not the only one. The old man said the same thing. Old man? What old man? Let's ask about the old man. Um, so who is this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder, there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? Why, so we, as usual, he came out alone that day. At the time of the murder, he was here. He saw it too. But he said the same thing, that there was no one else at the victim's table. Oof. The random mixture of uh, accents and partial French words is very tough. And Maggie swears there were two people. My yes, mademoiselle, the lawyer, he could not prove this, none. About the lawyer. That was me, I suppose. My yes, bien sûr. Wow. He's the person who said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. Hm. Now who's the one making stuff up? Oh no, there's a character worse than this one? I am assuming it, I'm assuming he won't answer if I present this to him. Oh, we are getting something with this. I found the sports paper in the magazine rack here. One of the customers must have left it behind. Do you have any idea which customer it was? The only ideas I have, mademoiselle. I saved from my kitchen. Let's ask about Maggie directly, maybe? Maggie was a policewoman once. I've... <laughs> chat, chat, question mark. I'm sorry, I really don't know French. I don't even... I don't even know where to begin to pronounce that combination of letters. Let's see, chat. I guess we'll learn today. Okay, so it means, isn't it so? I guess we'll listen to it briefly. We'll have it pronounced. Okay, it is pretty much kind of like, Nesepa, yeah. That's what it sounded like. Anyway, back to the game. Yes. She had to quit for, um, reasons beyond her control. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Who's the suspect in the murder investigation, none? Oh, you know about that? 
that is why I gave to her la perfume for la happiness. Happiness perfume? We oui. blended from Bergamon, like I've given to you before. But she's been arrested again, and found guilty this time. This is true. A natural aroma of unhappiness must have been very strong. Just admit it, your perfume doesn't work. I'm not surprised she was the prime suspect. But there's something like that took place before my very eyes. Something like what? What's this guy talking about? Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? Gotta ask this guy for more info, stat. Ask about Maggie's motive. Maggie took the coffee over to the victim. Did anything happen? We, oui. Oh, we. Oui. I suppose you could say so. But what happened? No, it was, uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie says she didn't even know the guy. She's been indicted for murder. The prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. We, oui, it is true. If there's anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please, tell us anything you know. Uh oh, chat. Three locks. Psych locks? No way. What are we gonna do, Nick? We'll just have to remove- What the? What's wrong? Magatama. It's gone. Huh? Had it in my pocket, but it vanished into thin air. What? But I could see the Cyclops. And that means the Magatama is nearby. Um, Sir Armstrong, can I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting. Is anyone else sitting there? That is the question you'll have to ask him yourselves. Huh? Him? The old man spends all of his time... Don Sla Park? Like down at the like what? Hold on, chat. Let's learn. There is there is a lot of intense French happening, and also accents. Yeah, I'm assuming it just means down at the park. La park. Oh, a park. What park's that? Fine Le Restaurant. It is called Vitamin Square. Thank you. Et vous en prie, my dear. Let's go check out this Vitamin Square right now, Nick. Well, okay, what ridiculous accent are we gonna get now? January 6th, Vitamin Square. Ah, uh, yes, a very normal, American-looking place. So this is Vitamin Square. Yeah, here where they get the name from now. Fruits scream vitamins at you. Just picturing them literally screaming. Hey, Nick! That's the guy, right? Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? The grouchy-looking grandpa. Throwing seeds out for the pigeons. Why, he's not throwing seeds for them. He's throwing seeds at them. What an unpleasant looking character. Also, definitely not Japanese. A very, a very American looking outfit. I too walk around in my robes like this with my headband. Like I'm ready to go to a, a spa or something. Ugh, my grumpiness threat level has been raised to red. The fact his nose is that big and he keeps hitting it is pretty gross. I'm gonna choose not to look at him for a bit. Let's look at job listings. Oh, there's a magazine here. A magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue! Picking up something someone else threw away! Threw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? Ha! Huh. That's none of your business! Sorry. Guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back! Too bad, now that you want it so bad. I don't want to give it up. Got blessings picked up from Invention Vitamin Square, thrown away by the old man. Hey, that's mine! 
Hey, look, pigeons! Yeah, heaps of them too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? That's a dove, not a pigeon. Poor things. So they can't be symbols of peace and harmony just because they're gray? Is that it? I'm overthinking this one by just a smidge, Maya. Making news, Larry commits theft in park, true. This is so fruity. It's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. They're among my favorites, he says when I investigate the strawberry. An apple slide is perfect for you. And what is so perfect about it? Makes them all the more American, maybe. Come on, don't be a stick in the mud. Let down it a few times. Go on! Woo! No way. Covered in sand if I slid down that slide. Anyone could see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try, too. I used to love sandboxes like you wouldn't believe. Really? You? Sure. Finding iron filings in the sand with a magnet was my favorite thing to do. Iron filings? Wow, that's... too exciting for words. It was my ambition to collect every shred of iron in the sandbox. Such a kid back then. So, did you manage to get all the iron? No, I never did. I think it came close, though. Come to think of it, I love all the iron filings I found way back when. You want them? No. I like the one dove that's in with the pigeons. Guess we'll talk to you. Let's ask what he saw. Um, excuse me. Do you mind if I had a word with you? Yes! I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? You don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? Oh, he's gonna be doing that in the courtroom now, you can already tell. Can we get him arrested for assault if he throws seeds at us in court? That's what I'm thinking about, Chad. Really chucking those seeds at them. It's gotta hurt. Go on, eat this! Ugh. Let's give out Maggie Bird. Sir, ask you about Maggie Bird. Hmm. I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress at Trespian. Ha! It's a disgrace, I tell you, another disgrace. A disgrace? Innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Revealing? You mean her uniform? Jeremy been with amongst other things? Probably not. Unfortunately true. He used it today. They don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. Not one ounce. Whatever happened to the old Bushido values of Japan? Like honor, honor and modesty. Ah, yes. Yeah, spoken like a t typical American. What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. You! Your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting a girl where it hurts. Just be in, I guess. Do you go to Tris Vienna a lot? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> a miserable excuse for a restaurant? garbage they serve in there is not food. Where's the sushi, the tempura, the rice? Hmm. Hmm. Miss Vienna is a French restaurant, sir. Who do you think we are, boy? In Paris? What real food, not these snooty snacks. I know, he's going intense. about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up there. There, yes, the waitresses. 
practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my my restaurant. Ah, it's a miserable excuse for a restaurant. That place, miserable. Yeah, waitresses in quotes. Certainly, he certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. If he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Must be regular. regular at that restaurant, sir. Oh man, dot dot dots. Just, if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Oh man, dot dot dots again. Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Haha, <laughs> take that! You must be hiding something, right? Is. I should be able to see a side locker too. Oh wait, I don't exactly have the Magatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick, Magatama is only on loan. Better find it or else. Or else ever gets wind of this. I'm gonna be in a world of pain. Sports paper. Let's give him the badge. <laughs> okay, so he's not gonna answer this. He throws pigeon feet at us if we do that. Ask about her again directly. Nope. He doesn't want to talk about any of those characters. Too much else to ask to him. Unless I just present the thing we just picked up. I don't really have anything else to really do with him. I guess we'll ask him about the job listings, I guess. Oh, he doesn't do anything with it. Hmm. But maybe I can talk to the guy in Tracepan for it? Yeah, maybe I can present this. Mademoiselle. Yes? Are you looking for the job? What? No, no. I was just... Let me see. The style is un peu diferente, but you have a good face. Different? Felicitations. You have passed. I will hire you. The end. Come with me. I will teach you everything I know. Nick? Help! I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. I should do both. I guess we just abandoned her. There's nothing else to do here. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. Let's ask her pretty much everything. Go to the criminal's affair department, I guess. Just need to find a new home for Pearl. It's probably better. Exactly. We just totally abandoned her, by the way. I'm not going back for her until the game makes me. <laughs> well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. We just started our investigation. Badger and Badger Girl, it's true. There's a new one there. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. Enough all my other cases for now, pal. He's really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. Retrial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Godot's gonna be the prosecutor. Oh. Him. Yeah. Now listen up, pal. Maggie's found guilty again. Yes? Um, I'll... I'll make sure you get locked up for good, got it? No matter what, whenever I come here, the mascot's there to greet me. You got that right. It's the blue badger. It was my idea. I made it. Now it's the national symbol of the police force. What's with the pink one? It's new, right? 
Yep. Meet the pink badger. The one's called blue, the other's called pink. But they're both called badger? Got it. They're married. So should I expect to see baby badger next time I'm in, I'm in here? Let's serve a female police officer. Wait. Oh, well, that's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. These are the detective's desks. There are computers and files in each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expected. Guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. So most of this just seems like recycled. I feel like they said this exact line like five times. Let's see if this guy is the same thing. Must be one of the detectives. Mumbling something to himself. I think the gas is like hitting the fast forward button on your life. Oh, that's too obscure. I really get the you'll die before your time idea. Need something more direct. Something a bit more lighthearted. Something like hitting the gas is your passport to paradise. He must be coming up with slogans for a safety campaign. I guess. Chat wants baby badger, oh no. Ask about Maggie Bird. The guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force. You were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close, you know. Phoenix dot dot dot, Gumshoe dot 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 Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? It was just her. It wasn't anything like... Look, I'm sure her boss was... Oh, uh, when she was... Oh, excuse me. Let's try this again. Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. I'm sure it's sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, oh, so that's it. Pickle Gumshoe is a little crushed on Maggie. I... I don't like her or anything. I... I was... Ah! Note yourself. Toss up with Maya about this layer. Later. Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? Gotta keep it a secret. Got it? Sure. You mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal, not me. I have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. Hmm. Let's ask about the victim. I'm still thinking about the whole stolen Mag Magatama thing. I mean, I guess it could be the chef that stole it. I'm just thinking it over. So I was wondering, could you fill me in on the victim? a computer programmer. I see. A programmer. He was just a regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Oh, okay. So he is, he is allegedly a computer programmer. So that's about what I thought. That makes sense. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah, I mean, when I'm looking at it, it's like a, what's it called? A palindrome, where it's the same name forwards and backwards. I don't know if that means anything for later in the case. Because it, It's a very weird name. I, I just don't know if it's supposed to mean anything else. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never have seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Check confirming it is a palindrome. Nice. Indeed, the badgers are handcuffed together. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef. Said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. Programmer. First time customer at that. Possible reason could Maggie have to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was somehow still established at her trial. You're kidding. What was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal. I'm real busy. I haven't even enough time to sift through these papers. 
Look into it yourself, okay? What this motive have been? Well, let's ask about the investigation. This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case, and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, this doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... She's... Okay, so she's a bit out there and a bit off base sometimes. She's a good cop. Or was a good cop, excuse me. Not exactly complimentary, you know. Thanks, Phoenix. What do you think really happened? Just how contradictory is her testimony? Contradictions. The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone, even the chef. And then there's that CD. CD. Oh yeah, she did mention something about a CD. Santa sample CD is on the table. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But her guys turned the place upside down. There was no CD. I mean, it just left with the killer. This isn't really rocket science. What? Not on the table. Not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. Didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece, too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio. In the front pocket of his hoodie. Portable radio. Okay. Radio? He didn't have a CD player? You got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. to think of it. The owner of Trace Band didn't mention the CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. I was gonna say, gee, Chad, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Maybe it's the Psylocks? <laughs> I guess I could present... Will you say anything about the magazine clipping? I wasn't at the trial myself. When I asked this one detective, I know how... I know how your defense was. What did he say? He started off by saying that I'm at a complete loss for words. And he must have found some... Found some quick because he went on about how bad you were for an hour. But... He said you suck so much it seemed like you are trying to get Maggie found guilty like I was trying to get Maggie found guilty? This isn't really rocket science, but whatever. What's that? Sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Trace VN. Dated the same day as the murder. Maybe you're onto something here. Take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey! What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Damn, Phoenix with the burn there. Ah, it's no good. I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal, I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? Wanna get a handwriting analysis done on this scribble? Handwriting, huh? 
good to know more about that in any case. Thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. Worth paid for given as a second gum shoe. Um. I guess I'll just ask about these two. Start with the blood egg. Who oh, doesn't want to answer that? Okay, so something you need to say about the chef. Anyway, he admitted that he was thinking about Maggie. That was the only other thing I really skimmed over just then. Anyway, Gumshoe says, The chef addressed Vienne, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Ooh la la, your body is full of toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know. The label says Juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know. Something about that lady. I mean, guy. Huh? You can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. I mean, I can't stop thinking about... Thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Let's think he knows a little something more about our charming chef. Yeah, let's ask about it. The charming chef. What exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Trispian? You mean other than everything? It's, um, kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Can you say you give me the dirt on anything? He under orders, apparently. Well, this sort of stuff is kind of unimportant gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You gotta trust me and investigate the place yourself. If you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Um... Let's suppose I get a choice in this, huh? So I better find out more about the chef and Trespien, and report back to Gumshoe. Because clearly I've taken over as the detective, because detectives aren't doing their job anymore. I'm just gonna go and interrogate people for some reason. Uh, let's go back to the law office. Poor Maya. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taking a shine to her. Let's all just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. Go pick her up from Trespien once things have cooled off. I mean, they're gonna probably put her in a maid outfit, and I'm gonna be disappointed. But now I could go to Trispian. I'm not really sure why I can't go from the wall office straight here, but whatever. Phoenix says everything, jack of all trades, master of none. That sounds about right. Then a flower sure is strong. What's making me dizzy? Oh. Oh, um, hello. Who was that just now? Customer? It's sort of a dark aura about her. Ah, uh, welcome. The Avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, it's gonna be Maya. Oh, she's gonna be dressed as a maid. Oh, it's just you, Nick. Maya. Well, how do I look? You look like fan service, Maya. Oh, dot 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 that tomb phoenix. Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe. It's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, my first ever customer. Who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh. Since you're here, might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. Ask about being a waitress, I guess. How do you like your new job, Maya? I don't know why she agreed to this. This feels exceptionally silly, but I'm not feeling it, chat. I'm telling you. I just I just don't like this kind of stuff. I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them food, make coffee, work the cash register. What, what waitresses do. Of course, we need a customer before I could do any of that. Yeah, nice looking restaurant. Shame more people don't come. Yeah, it's definitely more tame on the scale of things that I've seen of similar things. I don't like it still, of course, but, you know, whatever. Don't forget about the ultra-cute waitress. Check out my gimme-a-tip smile. Let's ask about the lunch special. Hey, Nick, why don't you order something? Just preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's the twin tea set. That's $20, of course. Oh, it's like 20, twin tea. I did there. The twin tea set. I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. Kind of expensive. <laughs> oh, Phoenix. 
prices have gone up so much since the time of this game chat. Twenty dollars is it, it's like above average, but it's like nothing compared to today's prices. What? You can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. To learn what a cash register is, it, what a cash register is, character growth. Cat sawing. Those were the days. Yeah. Remember when it was more like seven and eight dollars comparatively? Now it's more like fourteen to sixteen. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Kitchen, a lunch special, please. All the extras, drink, side salad, dessert, and gift. I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. It's really getting into this. How much is the set lunch, then? $20, huh? I mean, normally, you write down the order on a paper and you deliver the slip to the chef so the chef can read it as they cook. Or, you know, you can just shout it randomly for some reason. With the drink side and salad and dessert, it's $45. Okay, that's a more unreasonable price. Hey, wait a second, Maya. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. You are, here you are, our deluxe fortified lunch set. Is that a whole... I was gonna say prawn, but I guess I guess it's supposed to be a lobster? Question mark? I don't know. I don't usually have a lot of seafood. I, I, I don't have a sense of how big that is on the plate to answer that question. It's very red like a lobster, though. Phoenix says, whoa! This is inspired by lobster and abalone fri fricassee with the balsamic vinaigrette. Inspired by a lobster? What do you mean inspired by lobster? Bon appetit. Um, thanks? Come on, Nick. Hurry up and try it already. Lobster, huh? Alright. Down the hatch it goes. The herbs. Well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here. It's yours. Really? Herb. Remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you better polish off that plate. I just remembered. Gotta clean the toilets. Hey. Can't you you can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. This been lunch special added to the court record. Been lunch special plus twenty dollars despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. How does that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Hey Nick, wanna take a peek at the kitchen? Kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea ask about the kitchen for some reason. Hmm. Now, what was it that Maggie said again? Yeah, it loves her 2.0. It, it looked a little weird on the plate. It's like, it's missing its kind of, at least I didn't see its very dynamic tail, so I got a little confused. I mean, I guess it could have been chopped up, and maybe that's what that was served on the plate next to it. In the kitchen, you'll get to see all the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen? Hmm, that sounds tasty. Hey, wait up, Maya. What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Aren't you gonna show me around? Tisk, there goes my plan to find some cool clue. Show it off in your face. Better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. Okay. Trispian Kitchen. And here it is, the famous Trispian Kitchen. My first time in here too, actually. There is a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon. We better search quickly. Chop chop! What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow! Look at all these little bottles! Oh. Aromatherapy oils. We've got so many. They're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see. One, two, three. Mm, 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 mm. 98, 99, 100. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. What do you know? It doesn't have a label either. And it doesn't smell. 
What's that liquid liquid inside, I wonder? I don't know. Why don't you drink it and find out, Phoenix? I'm sure nothing bad will happen to you. Hey, Nick. You should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? Small bottle found in kitchen. Shape is different from the other bottles. Contents unknown. Small bottle added to the court record. Now this is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Larissa Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize material, is it? Looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool! Read one out! And say it with your best French accent. With intensity, okay? Okay, um, here's one. <laughs> it's called... Printemps. The two of them, like actors from a film. The coffee's still undrunk. Tweet nothing's over too soon. On that sad Sunday morning. The foolish cocktail so delicious. Takes the last sip of your tea. I know what I will do. I'm, I must lie to you. I must. That seems suspiciously aimed at the crime scene. Right, chat? Very suspiciously. Huh? That's it? Yep. That's a, t that's a poem for you. Real subtle there in the game. I love it. What are these lace curtains for? I don't know, but they give the place a real homey feel, don't they? Mmm, lace curtains. You know, if I was cooking a pot. If I was a cooking pot, I'd be perfectly happy to sit on a shelf under those. How do you respond to something like that? Mmm, smells good. I like it's bubbling away nicely in that pot. Must be the lobster and abalone fricassee with the balsamic vinaigrette. Isn't that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French. Dish I know the name of. Look at the knives, I guess. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. Never heard of most of these seasonings. Maya, I'm looking at knives. N knives aren't seasoning, Maya. <laughs> I was gonna say, what kind of meals are you having at home where you're just eating straight raw knives? <laughs> hey Nick, this container has oyster sauce. What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? <sighs> ah, look, right there on the counter. A Magatama! What's it doing there? What indeed. Magatama put into pocket. I guess he's the pickpocket? I don't know why else it would be here. We did have it when I was in the other area, but I guess it fell out while I was investigating. Now I know I'm in- Oh yeah, never mind. Same thing as before. Oh, now she mentions the sharp knives. She says, look at those sharp knives! I'd like to see one of those slice through- Oh, see how one of those slices through a cheesecake. A cheesecake? I don't exactly need one of those, Nick. Damn, we got burned. Uh, let's see. I investigated everything. The ones that cause... <laughs> it, that's true, you know what? Now it makes sense. She thinks it's seasoning because they file down the knives and she's removing them from the sandbox for her meals. It makes sense now. See, we're getting the deep extended lore of Phoenix, right? Wait, do you want me to do more there? Hmm. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on, we got more evidence, right? Yeah, let's give the small bottle to uh, Gumshoe. I guess that's good enough. I really dislike that I can't just go back to the other place. Like, why do I have to go to the detention center to go here? January 6th Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. It's one thing if I'm walking around in, like, different rooms connected in the building, and that's kind of whatever, but, like, why can I not go to a different location outside that one? Hey, you're just in time! The deep and troubling Maya lore. It would explain a lot of her issues, Chad, I'm not gonna lie. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about the newspaper you gave me. It must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn L. No doubt about it. Expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. Which paper refiled into the court record. Okay. Hmm. 
MC, MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. Also, having perfumes and oils like that in the kitchen is some kind of violation, I'm sure. I mean, I don't think you would put anything super freely near open sources of flame in general. I mean, there, there's a lot of problems with that kitchen. I wonder if he's adding those kinds of in unnecessary ingredients into the food. He's probably poisoning people. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find in the restaurant, okay, pal? When I start taking orders from Gumshoe. Although, I'm feeling there's something I need to show him. I'll represent the bottle. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't get you. It's just mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you agree? A loan bottle that doesn't smell, huh? It smells like a skunk to me, pal. Mind letting me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle is pretty important. Small bottle given to Detective Gumshoe. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. Suspect Jean Armstrong? Got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. Be the same secret Gumshoe's been talking about before. Guess I better fill you in on the details. Not this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. Mask, I guess. But sadly, we're probably gonna have to go back to the old man at some point. Because now that we have the Magatama, we probably need to investigate him. But we'll see if we get anything new from, uh... Gumshoe now. What's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had a lunch at Tres Bien, pal? Uh, yeah. So how was it? Put it nicely, it was... inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason the place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean. And he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, this is probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is he's up to his ears and dead. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. It's about half a million in the red. Yeah, see, there's the 500,000 that's scribbled out there. I think. Half a million? Are we talking dollars? Yeah. Hey, if it was Sterling, he'd be in real trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises. And I'd be willing to bet the chef's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Don's loan contract out of court record. Said it's a half a million dollars. The owner of the loan is Tender Lender. Okay, so this is kind of firming up my, my suspicions that the reason that nobody wanted to say anything is maybe because he was the loan shark to all of them, and that's why they didn't say anything. Because otherwise he would ask for the debt, for the money back that they didn't have. So at least we now have an explanation for the witnesses potentially not talking. So maybe with this, I have enough to go back to the... Jeez, I don't even know where it is. Vitamin square. There we go. January 6th, vitamin square. Hmm. The guy's not here anymore. Right, I still have some answer questions for him. Oh. Uh, there is a scooter here, though. What is this? Scooter, huh? I leave it here in the middle of a park like this. The wheel guard and the light are busted. Oh, maybe it's Maggie Bird's scooter? Guess it must have been in an accident. It's totally wrecked. Somebody's gawing at me. I don't know who's saying this, but I'll vo voice this in a moment. Oh no. How do I voice this character? Let me think. I'll, I'll do the guar. I'll make up the guar. I'm just, I mean, this is obviously the fake Phoenix, which is really stupid that people fell for this. I'm just trying to picture his accent in my head. Yeah, but see, the problem is, like, I just don't know a Brooklyn accent that well.
I'm just thinking about it. So I'm gonna make his voice a little deeper, but like, I'm just trying to picture his voice in my head. Like it's like, hey, what do you think you was doing with my bike? Or I don't know. I'm not quite feeling it. But anyway, he would have been like a from earlier. Bonix wrong, we mean it last. No, I was just... Rawr! You've been messing with my new ride? Is that what you've been doing? New ride? Isn't that kind of an old model? Rawr! You just gotta pay for this. It wasn't me. I was just passing by. Hey, then who... Oh man, this is a lot of... <laughs> this is definitely a big accent. Then who is the one who covered my saddle in crap, huh? Rawr, you's gotta pay, you catch my drift? No, wait a second. Not a pigeon. So I couldn't have done it. Wise guy, eh? Oh man, that is a face. Um. What do I think they're gonna name this character? I'm gonna go based off his shirt. His name's probably gonna be a tiger pun. I don't see why else they would have a tiger biting a dragon if the tiger is somehow not involved in his name. It's a very weird shirt. Put it that way. A wise guy, eh? I oughta beat you so hard it'll feel like you were smooching the express train. Uh-oh. You just better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers and then you's gonna pay. Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. Wait, so is the canon reason nobody spoke up in court is that they're all scared of his appearance? I mean, what did they just arrest him for? for oh, whatever, this is dumb. What'd you say? I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. <laughs> Trace makes me think of the Obitarian from Yakuza 0. Oh, that's true. I do miss Yakuza 0. Maybe one day we'll play a game like that on stream. The only problem is the more adult content, which I'm not a fan of, in that series. Although, to be fair, Judgment is a lot more tame with that, so I'd be more willing to stream Judgment over some of the Yakuza games. Phoenix Wright, you saying you Phoenix Wright? Um, yeah, I am. So, you was a wise guy too, eh? Cause I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. What? Out of my way, I gotta cruise. He he's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? <laughs> yeah, I think, see, small aside, I really like the Yakuza 0 series, or Yakuza series, but there's just certain side activities and a couple of main plot points that are not stream safe. And even if, it's like, I, I don't want to skip them because they are kind of... Some of them are semi-crucial to the game, and some are just terrible, and I don't like that they're in the game at all. So it's like kind of an awkward line to go in between things. That's saying, Phoenix, did you see the hair? Who else would it be? Yeah, I imagine I imagine it'll be something dumb, like they just think he's really angry, or the judge is like too intimidated to call him out. But the judge didn't see intimidated in the flashback. I would love to hear what dumb excuse they have for letting him get through. Phoenix dot dot dots. He wasn't anything like me. Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Get her added to the court record. Ah, pathetic. Oh, it's you. You threats from a little brat like that. You look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. Have you been here the whole time, then? I was in that strawberry. I had some thinking to do. Like you had some cowering to do. Now I imagine the Megatomba will light up since I have this here. Let's ask if they break up their restaurant. There we go. Now this will trigger. Like I said, the case is very chaotic. I knew it. This little guy has something to hide, but what could it be? I don't know. G chat, could he possibly be in debt to the loan collector, who clearly is the guy we just saw? He's even threatening to take us to court. That's classic loan shark behavior. Uh, let's present this. I'm assuming we have everything that we need. Take that! Take 
Crispy on the regular. Go ahead, lie about the food. We've tried it, so we know it's terrible. Time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at a restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? You've only one reason to go to restaurants. To eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent brat. How dare you accuse me? What proof you got? I can tell that not you or anyone else in the world would go to that place for food. Let's present the dish. Take that! Take that. Proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the lunch menu. It's the twin tea set. Food at Trespian is terrible. And expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a, a jot of work since I was born. Other than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. It's another story, but the price. It's nothing to me. So, you're saying that you got... You go there because you got money to burn? Exactly. If so much cash I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? I don't have money to burn. Flat broke. I guess we just present to him the job listing. Take that! Take that. This is yours, right? A magazine. How would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I I, I was... Ugh. So what? Well, thank you for the alert, Promethean. Hope you're doing well. So I was looking for a job. I'm busy... Oh, I'm buying a lot of... I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I won't go to that restaurant for food. Let's go for the Java Chino. Not a cappuccino, a java chino? Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino. Oh, even Phoenix corrected him. Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. There better be some golden beans. What's your problem? I think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, no, I wasn't thinking that. I'm wondering if the coffee there really is that great. No, it's not, but... But anyway, at least there's free newspapers to read every day. Well, that's an easy lie. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. Sorry, sir. There are no free papers to read at Trespian. Do I just present the sports paper directly? We don't have anything that technically says there are no other magazines there, but maybe I can present this and get away with it. Take that! Take that. Take a look at this. What is it? The newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trace BN. So, what of it? This was the only paper there. It dated more than a month ago. What? You see what I'm getting at here? The restaurant doesn't get newspapers. It's just this one that a customer happened to leave behind. Ah. Uh, ah! Uh. Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? Uh, I'm not hiding anything. I'm gonna have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go so much to Trace Vienna is... Thank you, bird. Take that! Take that! That's a cheap coffee nowadays, kind of, yeah. What are you asking me for... Or what are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Trace Vienna. Ah. Therefore, the answer to the mystery. Why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant. Is the waitress. Ah! But I don't recognize that face. You're probably telling the truth here. Because you weren't looking at the girl's face. But at her outfit. Oh, man, that's... He gulps. That's the truth, isn't it? I am a regular at the restaurant restaurant because of the waitress's uniform. A uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, uh, I, I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your... Enough, please, no more! Stop saying that word. Stop saying waitress. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What a lovable character. Unlock successful. Um, sir. Yes, it's true. I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no. I didn't mean it like that. I know why I forgot him. That's fair. I even get one of those lousy cups of Javachino every time for $8. Because of the serving girl. 
Punish me, lock me up. Really, that's not what I'm here for. He's descending into Hody territory, he kinda is. He's also kinda gross too, like him. Especially since he keeps flicking his nose, which is really gross. He'll be the same. Another 20 years and you'll understand what it's like. Oh, how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really. Listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy. So just show some respect, hmm? I'm Victor Kudo. His name is Kudo? Like, you give kudos to someone? Okay. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I'll tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident. It means I have to hear his testimony. One way or another. Hmm. I don't believe this. I even broke his side locks and everything. It's tough to try to get him when he's in a better mood. Can't do anything here. Uh. Has Maya seen him? Oh, it's that old man. Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. Put a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, do you mind coming with me for a while? Oh, we're gonna lure her there? That's not what I was thinking, honestly. I mean, it makes sense in context of the game, but it's still creepy. Huh? Me? Why? I don't think I really want to ask that old man. Sure, okay. I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess. Not what I was thinking. Um, sir. I know, a big sigh. Hmm, you again. Hmm. Well, well. I see. Uh, Nick. His eyes are burning into me. It's okay. I think it's gonna be... I think it's going pretty well. Huh. Huh? Still just a little child. Run along and play on the slide, alright? Play on the slide? Ah, uh, we were so close. It's a little more and he would have spilled. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. P pigeon. Hmm. Ka. How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me, please, sir. Why? Can't you see I'm feeding the pigeon? No! Ugh! Of course. Of course. Is this what this character has been reduced to? They're like, listen. Mia has been dead for years, but we're, we're gonna go... We're gonna pull her from the afterlife so she could show off her breast size to old men in the park. Is that... Is that really where we're going with this character arc? Like, this is just really bad, chat. I'm just... I have an honest question for people that have played the other games. Are the other games like this? Question mark. Because I'm becoming increasingly disappointed in the series. The second game was not good. The third game is, um... Well, we're witnessing the third game right now. Yeah, it's a big ugh. I mean, like, I remember playing the Investigation spinoff, and I think it was okay, but I don't think the villains were, like, as over-the-top or memorable for the most part. Unless it was, like, a major villain. I don't know, chat. <laughs> I'm feeling very mixed feelings right now. Mia! Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Y yes yes of course, certainly, I'm Victor. Victor Kudo. Came from beyond the grave, wow. Uh... About the incident. You mean the man who died after dr drinking the Javachino? 
Like he is a different. It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock, even for me. It's a strange looking boy. The girl took the Giampacino over to him, you see. And was the customer alone? <clears throat> Definitely. He was the only person at the table. <clears throat> then he took one sip of his Giampacino and. And. He said something like, ah! And then collapsed, dead. Oh, how terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything. Whatever you want to know. <laughs> Finally seems to be telling the truth now. It looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man either. Trespien. Do you like the food at Trespien? Well, well, of course. I'm only quite a sophisticated man. A young businessman once, you know. Set up a casino in London. And my Magatama is still in my inventory. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh yes, France is wonderful. I have to show you around the city sometime. Why isn't the Magatama like lighting up like a fire, like a firework at the moment or something? It's too much. I can't take it. I want friends. Ha 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 ha. Can't believe Mia's laughing at this guy. Uh Trespian. Regular. You visit Trespian a lot, don't you? Any strike struggles with law, but knows his geography. Maybe. Of course. I mean yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> Really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. Chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. Man's an ex-con. He... he's an ex-con. Armstrong's record. Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes. I can't take this. He's really got this guy eating out of her hand. Steals things from his customers. From his customers? Phoenix asks, having already retrieved the Magatama. Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things mainly. He's a pilferer. Maybe be careful around him, my dear. Oh, so that means he probably, out of his kleptomaniac habit, stole the poison bottle. Probably what happened. Are you sure about this? Of course. I was arrested for it once. I promise you this is low as, as low as this game goes. The rest is insanity. I don't know. It's definitely a low point for sure. I was there when it happened. Having my Java Chino. It really is a regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. Ah, yes. The average American haiku. Haiku. Japanese poem. I'll explain all you need to know about that chef. Victor's note says, Convicted before a wicked man or woman, repeat offender. I think it's the 575 or something. Anyway, we got the court record. Updated with that poem. Be takes anything again, you'll let me know. I was genuinely counting syllables, Chad. I didn't, <laughs> didn't trust the translation team. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, is that 575? <laughs> I'm like, is it? If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy. He couldn't do enough for Mia. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I could do to help. Thanks, Mia. Got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. Oh, Mia, none of us can believe you were called like this. This is, um, a choice. But I mean more, not even for the rest of this game, I mean the rest of the series, more specifically. I hope the other games are not like this, if we ever want to do those. I don't think Investigations ever had a moment like that. I didn't play the second Investigations, though. I would be open to those side games, maybe. Anyway, let's move away for now. 
January 6th, Trispian. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah, plus no one came to the restaurant. Ooh la la, Mademoiselle Maya. Nan, how could you leave me like this? I'm sorry. That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a side lock for three, didn't he? Gonna have to break those. Mr. Armstrong. Hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Volunteers, of course. All right. So I'm gonna make a safety save here. The reason I want to do this is in my notes for the achievements, which I was looking over just now, I have to present everything to this character to unlock an achievement called Jean's Foreign Language Course. So we're going to, I guess, slowly do things. present everything we have one at a time. <laughs> so, anyway, I guess we're about to get a lot of dialogue for the achievement. You don't need to do this. I'm, I'm gonna do the Megatama last. Or I guess I could present it again. I, I don't know what order to do this in. We'll, we'll start with the Eternity Badge. Please, Montoya, there is no need to zone me that. You are Mon Phoenix Wright, the worst defense attorney in town. I think you can imagine how he formed this completely wrong impression of me. The last time we met, did I show you this badge? We flashed it to everyone in the, in the restaurant. Looks like Zanny Hoff is a bigger fan of flashing stuff than you are, Nick. I'm not a lawyer myself, so I do not leave this speech out of her. Your defense in court that day was a little, how you say, lacking, perhaps. Uh, but a Frenchman who cannot speak any English could have done a better job. You are very cool, though. Oh, oui, oui. Yes, yeah, so handsome. Wow, I wonder just how bad the defense could have been. Every time you opened your mouth, the old courthouse stirred. Oh man, that is something I don't want to imagine. Oh la la. You're also looking for a job, also. No. Oui, oui. The looks are un peu unusual, shall we say. But I love your style. Look unusual? will suit you perfectly. A uniform of la waitress. I just knew it. Lunch special. Oh la la. If you eat my lunch, we oui? Tell me, monsieur. Did you enjoy la lunch I prepared for you? It was, a uh, unique and wild mixture of flavors? That was the first time I've ever had lobster, you know. Like, where's the lobster tail? As I said before, maybe they chopped it up up and it's supposed to be next to it. That's why I got confused at first. Lobster? There was no lobster in my lunch. Huh? But it said lobster right on the menu. Oh, okay. No, we are getting the confirmation here. Madam with Elmaya. Please, you must read the menu more carefully. It said lobster inspired. That's why I was a little confused earlier, too. There's a dish inspired by a lobster and a blonde fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Oh. It's only inspired, is it? We. Oui. Inspired this by these ingredients, but not perhaps made from them. Nesipas? Well, I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles, Nick. The way the lunch tasted, it. it's probably 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. Present the sports paper. Found the sports paper in the magazine rack here. One of my customers must have left it behind. Have any idea which customer it was? The only idea is I have, Mademoiselle. 
that's it for my kitchen. Present the loan contract. Pardon, pardon. Without my reading glasses, I cannot see this. I do not read English well. He's not even looking at it. Better find a way to make him look then. I'm about this. Felicitations, Miss Wiseke. Was this say K sest? I have no idea, chat. There's too many too many words in a row. Ah, um Didn't no comprehend. Nick, don't just make something up. Victor's note. Pardon, pardon. Is that my reading glasses that I cannot read it? Okay, so he says the same thing here. So clearly the loan contract and the Victor's note will be needed for later. Present Maya. Mademoiselle Maya, how are you funding my restaurant? I think I've got the hang of it now. But I think it's time for me to... Ooh la la nan, you're quite... You're quitting already. It will be a new record for the shortest period of employment ever. Ask about Mia for some reason. Amandu, what beauty? That's my sister. Ah, we oui, another delight. You have a certain je ne sais quoi that I do not sense from your sister. That one I- that one I'm pretty sure I said correctly, but I still don't know what that means. <laughs> I've heard it before, and I'm assuming that's what that is. I do? Totorio and I, bust out your feminine features. Oh jeez, we don't need more of that. Do not lose art, Mafili. You're a woman, a woman extraordinaire. Do I look like I need cheering up or something? Hello. Um, about this. Felicitations, mice. Nobody's saying. Alright, so some of these he just presents the same things, but we're gonna present all of them. Maggie was a policewoman once, n'est ce pas? Yes. She had to quit for, uh, reasons beyond her control. Okay. Yeah, we know about the happiness perfume. Okay. So he doesn't have anything new here, but we just presented it anyway. What happens if we present him to him? It's hard to imagine, I know, but I was an apprentice for five years in... In Le Gay, Paris? Uh, wow, in Paris? <laughs> That's not the word I would have focused on, but sure. It was something Le Chef Zier said to, to make that... Let's try this again. It was something Le Chef Zier said to me that made me decide to open my own restaurant. What was it? That awful man said to me, you must train for another ten years. Oh, it was such a shock. So unexpected. But you would have to be a fool to do this, none? French for I don't know what, a pleasing quality that can never be exactly named or described. Ex interesting. But I'm pretty sure I said that correctly. In Happy Paris? Maybe. Guess we'll present Glen Egg. Ah, le dead man. He was la first in my restaurant. No way. You mean the first customer you ever had? No, no, no. It was the first time I've had the dead man in my restaurant. Such a shame to lose a customer after only his first meal here. Victor Kudo. Ah, this is the old man. He is a regular ear. A specialty of cappuccino and cold water is one of his favorites. Cappuccino and cold water? That sounds disgusting. Is he here at this time of the incident? We. Oui. He was here. I'm sure of it. When the incident happened, the old man was here. Alright, now let's present the Magatama. Take that! Man should never be allowed in the kitchen. Yeah. I think he. Oh no, he's doing the whimpering face. I think he needs at least 30 years in the kitchen. Or maybe 30 years behind bars. You know what? I'm fine with either. Maggie's motive. Poor Rose. He's murdering it, chat. Ooh, what is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? The laws, the laws. I'll convince everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. Oh, so the other guy won the lottery, so he would have been able to pay back his debt to the loan shark, and therefore he doesn't have to give him the computer program that would implicate him, but because the other guy needed the computer program that was provided by, that, I'm presuming, a hacker, he killed him anyway to take the program to make money. Okay, 
now now I think our motive is locked in. I, we that is the piece of evidence that I needed to figure out everything. So I think we're good. So now we just gotta let it play out in court, I guess. A lottery ticket. The men who died here had a lottery ticket. For half a million dollars. Yep. Half a million? We. Oui. But after like incidents, yes. Ticket. It disappeared. Got a heart's flashback intensify. He needs a coffin. It's true. Ticket disappeared. This was the motive that the prosecution gave for Maggie. They said that she poisoned the man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Why didn't you tell me about that sooner? Why is it yours? They're trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. I want to know the reason why. Gone, Monsieur, you doubt me? I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Um... Do I just present him to it? Because he steals everything? Uh... Well, actually, that's kind of the... See, like, this feels like a trick. Like, I think he... <sighs> I could present the attorney badge to implicate the other person, but he also had a reason to steal it. And he's also the klepto. Hmm. I mean, like, technically I think the attorney did take it if I'm following my own plotline. This is actually a bit- this is actually like a 50-50 for me. I'll, I'll go with the attorney badge, actually, to see- to implicate the other person. No, it's not working. Devon means how are you? Oh. Oh, you know what? I misunderstood the achievement. Never mind. I understand what I have to do. Oh, that's gonna be annoying. Bien. Happy to hear it. Sound like I'm doing so fine with the side locks, though. I misunderstood why it warned me to save. I didn't need to see the other ones. I need to see these. Oops. Poor Maggie. She was tempted by the evil nun. Hurry, lose Maggie. After no reason, that facts for me. Okay, so I guess we can implicate him later. So, I guess we just go through our items. See what happens. Well, how about it? Save off? Okay. So we're, go we're gonna fail it on purpose. I'm gonna make sure we got all the words that he has. Let's see if I also implicate somebody else here. <laughs> I wanna see if he says something different here, because now he's actually saying words. Oh, never mind. He's not doing it. Maybe they don't need it then? Maybe I misunderstood the other thing. Disregard. He doesn't seem to have different dialogue, but I'm gonna do that just in case. Because that still could be the achievement, because he did say more French words. So, okay. So, we'll proceed and just implicate him then and go forward. I thought he was going to teach us a new phrase every piece of evidence we had. I mean, I guess I could double check with Victor to see if we get a new phrase. No, it's the same one. Okay, never mind. Disregard, Chad. Let's proceed with the plot then. So then we'll say he took it because he's the kleptomaniac. Yeah, I was curious. It's possible I still needed to see the failure, though. Because he needs to say it. And I think that's what... Maybe that's why I got it wrong with the lunchboxes before. I might have missed one failure scenario when we needed to have the different food presented to us back in the first game. If you remember the box lunch lady, I think I missed one failure scenario, and that caused us to knock at the achievement. So I think I might have still needed to see that, maybe. But I don't need to keep showing it to the other ones. So anyway, let's proceed here. Mr. Armstrong, I believe there's a very high possibility that it was you. Ah. And if I missed it, which I'll check after we're done with the trial, I'm gonna reload. Because the only thing I didn't- I think I presented literally everything in our inventory, and I failed on purpose. 
So hopefully that will cover us. Because it says present, like the only thing that I have under it for achieving it is you have to present the attorney badge, magazine clipping, job listing, lunch special, Megatama sports paper, uh, the loan contract, the scooter, the note, all the profiles, and that's it. So presumably I should have it. I'll check after this. Wow, that was one piercing scream, even for a man like him. My sport came moi. Why, you have no evidence. I'm not mask to mask. I'm not the kind of person who steals other prop steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong. But I have evidence to the contrary. It presents to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. Uh guess I'll present Victor's note. Take that! Take that. What is this, a poem? Oh, Manzur, you know me so well, I adore poems. Please read it. Put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman. Repeat the fender. Sorry to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong. But you've been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon Le Mon Song, you are the liar. You deny it? Do not make la false ac accusations, s'il vous plaît. If that's how you say that. Oh, do you have any proof? What to see la incontestable proof I've ever stolen from one of my customers? I just present the Magatama. See, this one's actually a genuine question. I guess I could just present this. Take that! Seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. Ooh, what is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. None. Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. We, oui, we. Oui. I have a weakness for la little trinkets and la figurines. My end, it just slips out. I cannot help it. You're stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? We, oui, it is the truth. I'm just a timid little girl inside, Monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this is time. It was not a small trinket, we. Oui? It was five hundred thousand dollars. Was no one. Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now. Oh, Monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true you're in some pretty serious trouble, and that you're in desperate need of a large amount of cash? Let's go ahead and do this. We'll present this. The debt contract. This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Uh. You have a loan. To the tune of half a million dollars. A lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Uh. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Uh. Uh. Okay, we should get our health back. But let's see. Maggie's motive. Mr. Armstrong, you said the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man, he was listening to the radio with his earpiece. He said something about that too. The winning numbers were announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. And the ticket? We. Oui. He had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I... I was so desperately in need of money, I... Put the poison in his coffee? No, 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 no. Oh, no, you naughty man. I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, what a que pass. And he had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. Winning ticket. He did not take it. Look at the ticket for half a million, I mean. You just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. Must none, my fully. It was not. That's enough. Huh? Ah! Mr. Godot!
I guess I didn't really think about it before, but maybe the reason he has a red visor on is because they're playing off a pun of that he's seeing red, like he's come back for revenge. Maybe that's why they partially gave him the visor, other than the fact that he's related to the case earlier in the game. I mean, that, that seems like a good visual pun, I suppose. Mr. Godot, what in the heck are you doing here? Ugh, this is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. He came in here for coffee. Does this craving for coffee know no bounds? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I am La Airhead Nun. Just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I'm just a pretty face. Without my looks, I have nothing. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed, what did happen to it? I don't like spoiling on myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Uh, voila, you two. Time to laugh at the pretty little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Victor's note thrown into the trash. Damn. Looks like we got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? Oh, gee, chat. It could be with anybody. So, okay, okay. So, in my defense, chat, in my defense, the winning ticket wasn't stolen by him, so I was technically correct when I guessed that it was the other attorney that took it. I, I think I outsmarted the game. I got ahead of myself, chat. Oops. My bad. Whatever. I'm telling you, Chad, if I was a lawyer in this universe, these cases would be like a day long, tops. <laughs> be like day one trial. Done. <laughs> like, I don't need a day two. We're good. <laughs> Fools. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this. Certainly not again. So we'll do at least the beginning of the trial, and then we'll take a break after the trial. We need Phoenix Smart. Something like that. Listen, chat. I'm good with, like, mysteries. I am terrible with puzzles. So when it wants me to assemble an urn in 3D, garbage tier. I can't do it. You want me to do something else? I got it. Uh-oh. I thought I saved at the bottom save, but it looks like I did not do that. Uh, That's annoying. I'll have to check that later. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we're good. Never mind. I'm sorry. I looked at the dates. I looked at the time, then I looked at the dates. So we're good. So I have this in case I want to come back to it. Let's do this one then. That's what I get for not reading carefully. January 7th, 9.48 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. I haven't decided if I want to go back and fix the the one missed meal. I'm not even sure which one I missed, to be honest. Because I thought I followed the instructions for the achievement, but whatever. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. I mean, it's possible the instructions were wrong, to be honest with you. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Maggie. Ah! Detective Gumshoe! Are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. Don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you. Yes. You better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. I think he's serious. Hey, Detective. You're on our side for once, right? Yup. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? 
I like how they don't acknowledge the first game's fifth case is canon. Because technically he helped us out there too. But the other games will not acknowledge that uh, new content. Oh, of course! I've got this situation under control. I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. Something I say doesn't mesh with the facts. Make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? Can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. Always admire you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. January 7th, 10 a.m., just a court, courtroom number four. Bang. I already know I have to rehydrate for the judge. <laughs> his, his voice can get me sometimes if I don't drink carefully throughout the uh, trial. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. It begins, chat, the coffees. Ah, bitter. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Ah. What's wrong? Okay, so he was intimidated. Which is really dumb. Nothing, it's just... Whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was... You was talking to me. It was a little, well, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. It was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty... So, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough with this trial today. I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix, right? <laughs> Coffee counter one. No Phoenix play into it, keep the judge intimidated so he's scared to rule against you. It's true. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. I mean, to be honest, Godot, I'm kind of signing with Godot again. I'm not entirely convinced we studied at a law school. I'm not entirely convinced, chat. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Find that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. It's almost like he's seeing red, chat. Bang. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during this retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. Not planning on repeating anything that phony me said, trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name and occupation. Dumpshoe dot dot dot. Witness, state your name for the court. Uh, oh, sorry, sir. The name's the police... <laughs> oh boy, he's, he's, he... His tongue-tiedness made me tongue-tied for a second. Let's try this again. The name's police department detective. Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. Other way around, detective. Blue Donna is even confused. See, confused Blue Donna. That's not fair. Blue Donna's already so confused. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who's on the initial investigation tied up with another case now. How come she's really got everything under control? For everyone's sake. Blue Donna, you're doing so well. Yeah, he confused himself. He heard himself in his confusion, chat. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Eld. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Incorporated, a local company. Oh, so he just worked at Windows. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Lens autopsy report added to the court record. Died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. I mean... 
I don't think there's really much of a mystery. I guess the only mystery that hasn't been resolved is why only some people saw him. Because it, it, because the Magatama didn't go off, so now I have to assume that the old man didn't see him somehow? It's possibly that wasn't just intimidation then. So we'll put a question mark there in our theory for now. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right there. Poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. The waitress being accused. Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Okay, where are they sitting relative to each other? Mr. John Armstrong, the owner and chef. And a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Judge also hmms. It seems to be a very straightforward case to me. SBN floor plan, blueprints of crime scene, X equals victim seat. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Um, yes, sir. It's a very straightforward and severe at his trial, right? Verdict the same. I mean, I feel like it's it's what he normally does, to be honest. When, uh, <clears throat> let's go through his testimony, I suppose. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understood that the guy, Glenn L., was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. What we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff packs a real punch. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have, well, some kind of motive. Hmm. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Lassie Lady. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Well, don't say that, Judge. You're gonna make- <laughs> You're gonna make Maya hungry for iron. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Hmm... Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you, that wasn't me. The incident. Um... I guess we need to press on the fact that he said they were alone, because we need to eventually introduce the fact that another person was sitting there. Maybe we'll get more information for pressing this. Hold it! Hold it. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? Hmm. So desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. The testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Burr. She claims there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. And I... Objection. What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey. 
Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. Their two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? We have to. Press harder. Well, maybe the other witness has just missed him. Perhaps her view of the victim's table is obscured in some way. Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee at Trey Bien. Trite. Dot 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 exclamation mark. I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? It's more like a photo to me. Yes. A one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population the defendant. There you go, chat. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. Right, so if he's a little further to the left, he wouldn't be seen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime, and not this chair that he's sitting at. How, Mr. Trike, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? Well, easily, you don't see the whole other seat. Ah! Uh, I feel like... The gavel bangs, but I'm like, I feel like he just undid his own case. Like, I, I don't... I mean, now you're just introducing the fact that you couldn't see anybody sitting there. It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly, except you don't see... Ugh, guy's an idiot. I'm photo added to the court record, I guess. Hmm. We did get information. I don't know if the radio is important. Do we have anything about the poisoning in here? We have the autopsy report. Maybe he'll mention the bottle if I press him? Let's try it. Hold it! So, traces of poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid or was it a powder? If I had to put it in layman's turn, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Objection. Objection. Uh-oh, Chad, another coffee. Huh. You put salt and pepper in your coffee, trite. The victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Uh. It seems the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder? Sure. Are you absolutely certain the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? Pointing to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. What proof is that the vict victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. That's what I was thinking. Objection. In case you were wondering, the last objection was for the detective there. Uh, for me? Slam the coffee. Oh, hey, you're right. Maybe fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. You have the time w to waste. You have the time to present that piece of evidence. Th that piece, sir? Yes. That piece. Not that piece, chat. Can you give him a bit of coffee? Press the statement over and over? Maybe. <laughs> oh, what piece was it again? Let's find out. This. I'd be grateful this coffee's only hot enough to give me first degree burns. Wow, chat. We have been defeated. Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's coffee cup. Take a good look at the rim. So the courtroom plus one. Oh, yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Inclusive proof that the victim did drink the poison coffee that was in this cup. Another coffee. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this. Ah! 
For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. I mean, you don't need to put your prints on it if you're just pouring something in. Coffee cup. The coffee contained potassium cyanide. Covered the victim in Megan's fingerprints. Coffee cup added to the court record. If he says having just arrived and not knowing the context, yes. <laughs> I guess we will have coffee thrown at us every case. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. Hopefully you're doing well, Murphy. Uh, do I press the stick or not? Guess we press this? Hold it. Some kind of motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Objection. Objection. <laughs> yeah, Gumshoe's a, Gumshoe's a little off in today's testimony. We'll forgive him for that, though. You know what my golden rule is, detective. Chuck out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. Well, apparently, you seem to have, like, a, a coffee machine to hear you at all times or something ridiculous. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying, we can always get another witness on the stand, if we have to chuck you out. He gulps. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. It's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. It wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a liner it was a winning lottery ticket for half a million. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Can I press on this point a little harder or not? Um Yeah, let's press harder. Wait a minute. The mere fact the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Ah, oh, I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. That's a half a million dollar lottery ticket. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search. Of the defendant. What? Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. Ah, oh, he's quite a lucky bird, our w little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. Hmm, I'm gonna keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. Victim's lottery ticket, a winning ticket for half a million dollars found during a body search of Maggie, added to the court record. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial too. But it feels heavier now, some somehow. H half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, your honor. Judge dot 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 from the chat. That's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. Bang. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. I like how he didn't even allow us to cross-examine or do basically anything else. One witness showed up and it's over. So dumb. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. And like an old man who knows the score. There is also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, I might be tempted to bend the rules. Wait, is the judge acknowledging there's rules in the courtroom? Are we sure? <laughs> Given the past, like, maybe in the first game's fifth case there was, but I'm not sure since then there's been many rules. I mean, Double Jeopardy's come up, and I think that's about it. Everything else just seems to be whatever. I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie's starting to pile up fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I don't I don't know if they I don't know if they remember evidence law anymore. 
It's non-canon. <laughs> yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. It's like the old Yu-Gi-Oh, you just make up the rules as you go along, exactly. Any minute now, the judge will claim that because his, uh... Because the harpies have flying type, he can't be attacked by ground monsters. <laughs> he refers to the rules he makes up? Yeah, that, that seems more accurate. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final, decisive piece of evidence. It's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, it's not the cleanest apron I've seen. Oh, can he not see the... Wait a minute, how does that work? Because th there's red on the apron, but he sees red. Is that going to be a plot point that he can't see that? That stain looks like... It can't be. Blood, can it? Because the coffee was a dark type, your spirit tricks won't work here. I was going to say it. <laughs> At any minute now, we're going to talk about shooting our fireball into the darkness to destroy the castle of illusions. Ah, oh, it seems the star of our play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course. Coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course. Referring to the pocket. Yeah, I have a feeling he can't see the blood, so this is going to be a plot point. The pocket? Exactly. Attack the moon, chat. A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. That's saying when I was a kid, I wanted to get a Yu-Gi-Oh! So I watch it and figure it out because it was sick of my life. Well, I mean, like, you could definitely tell they were just kind of sort of basing a card game off of D&D. &D, and then it wasn't until much later that they realized there probably should be rules. And that Joey Wheeler is really terrible at deck design, so they had to revamp his stuff. It just, it's one of those things, chat. It, it wasn't thought all the way through. And then it became a ridiculous commercial vehicle success for Konami. Boots <laughs> visor means everything is red, so we can't see the stain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. Oh no. Not the Time Wizard Baby Dragon combo. A bottle of poison? Maggie's pocket? Yeah. Maggie's prints weren't the were the only ones oh excuse me, were the only ones on it. And we go, what? Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. The court will accept these items and the evidence. Apron added to the court record. Oh no, chat, am I gonna have to play Yu-Gi-Oh! on stream? I don't mind playing some of those games, to be honest. I don't know if I've ever 100%ed more than a couple of them. Apron worn by Maggie at the incident has a small pocket but big stains. But we're not gonna talk about the red on the apron. That seems cyanide, a deadly powdery poison, bears Maggie's fingerprints, found her apron pocket. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Blood stain. What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's it. Time Wizard, Baby Dragon's 100% combo, you need polymerization. Yeah, I think he's more referring to the fact that you could just play it, and then while it's on the field, it does what it does in the show. Where he does the nonsense time roulette and it turns into Elder Dragon with no other cards. Joey's basically a cheater. Well, my favorite thing is trying to figure out what is a fusion monster and what is not. Like the Flame Swordsman, they get the color wrong on the card all the time. That one drove me wild. <laughs> He doesn't- he doesn't even play anything with some of those, chat. Just- he just plays the cards. He doesn't care. Yeah, I think they- I think people have theorized that there were rules at, like, the Battle City tournament. 
that specifically did things to, to the little components like polymerization, and that's why it's so different from the other one. But I feel like they honestly just forgot. <laughs> like, I feel like that's just... That that feels a bit more convoluted to me. I feel like the I forgot what my own rules were is seems more likely scenario. <laughs> Whatever. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. Yeah, that's about where we thought it was going. Ruffy saying, for what it's worth, the card game has been consistent the entire time. The manga and the anime made some of the same little log. Uh, probably true. I mean, definitely anytime they showcase any anime card, they, they have some ridiculous things. It does make me sad that there are cards used in the anime that don't exist. I think, uh... We're, we're going on a Yu-Gi-Oh tangent. Sorry, people that are here for, for uh, Phoenix Wright. We're, we're, now, we're now in, uh... It's time to duel in the courtroom, I guess. But specifically, I think uh, there was one card. What was it? No, it's not Pot of Greed. It's the other draw card that they use. That card has had like the most inconsistent effect across the show. Like sometimes it draws seven cards and they discard cards. Sometimes it draws three cards. Sometimes it draws two cards. I just remember that doing whatever the plot wanted. Like almost every other duel, it was used for a different purpose. I think it has like an image of like a like a guillotine or something like that. Maybe chat knows what card I'm talking about. And of course they censored the guillotine as well, by the way. <laughs> yes, by the way. Well, I think only the Japanese version is the guillotine. But anyway, let, let's continue on with the plot, I suppose. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be blood? Doesn't help that everyone tried to play using the anime rules or everything. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, how many effects do the Egyptian god cards do? Just tell them they're not allowed to play them until they speak the ancient Egyptian. That's clearly the card rules for the card. But only one of those cards needs it, not the other cards. You just play them. Right, Chad? Just shrug. No way, sir. That's... It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? It must have gotten someone her apron while taking someone their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. I'm not gonna say I'm an ancient pharaoh win, win, win right? Maybe. I don't know, Chad. This is kind of giving me the... It almost makes me want to play Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit. I'll not go beyond 5Ds, though. 5Ds is my limit. I'm not playing beyond that. Pull a stunt like that again, and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. Hmm. Ugh. Thought everyone knew it, what it was already. I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case. That's saying, just stand on the edge of the building and say if your monster gets destroyed, you'll fall to your death. That's how you win. That's true. Yeah, I think one of the BS... If I remember one of the BS cards was... uh, might have been Card of Sanctity, specifically. But there was another one where it was like something... I feel like it was called something Judgment that had like the, the guillotine. I need to remember what that card is. They they basically cheated, like, half the anime cards. They were not consistent. It, in early Yu-Gi-Oh! specifically, they were really crazy inconsistent. Some of them, it kind of did the same thing between duels, but not really. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see anything yet to make me doubt the ruling I made on this case. Dot 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 exclamation mark. Like one of the really old Yu-Gi-Oh! games, maybe, like, Forbidden Memories or something, for some of the games are wacky as heck. Oh, that one's a pretty popular one to speedrun. I only vaguely know how that works. That kind of remember is memorizing tables and stuff like that. I'll probably be very bad at that, though. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, trite. It seems you really are a phony after all. Hmm. 
Ah, uh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation here. The investigation. Oh, you know what it was, chat. Card of Demise. That's what it was. <laughs> it, it came to me eventually. I was thinking really hard, chat. I want you to know. I was reading the dialogue while my brain is going, what was the name of that card? What was the name of that card? Yeah, that card effect was ridiculous on the show. The investigation. The crime was re oh, excuse me. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. Must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out who he was pretty quick, and the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison, and that was it. There's nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Yeah, they definitely toned down a lot of the card effects, so I feel like a lot of people saying they quote-unquote did the card wrong is sometimes true? But you have to kind of compare with the show to itself. Because a lot of a lot of those cards are just not based. The, the anime effects are somewhat consistent if they add those kinds of things, but there are some cards where it was like just absolute Looney Tunes how they were used in the show. That was one of the cards I remember being like really weird in different episodes. It's it, it was Kaiba's cheat card, that much I remember. Last chance to- oh, excuse me. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Dot 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 exclamation mark from us. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this. So, let the fun begin. Okay, let's press him on a couple statements. I don't know if I want to ask about the old man yet. Hmm. Yeah, what do you mean by they figured it out, figured him out pretty quick? What does that mean? Hold it! The consistency, consistency, exactly. Wait a second. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. Basically what you said, yes. Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. So let down. He's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eye things going on. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table, along with the lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glen Egg visited his doctor before he went to Tres Bien. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm. That's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Then leave this alone or ask to hear more. Um, good question. Ask about, wait, ask about its health insurance. I don't know. Let's ask about the prescription bag, I guess. So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Oh, maybe it was that other bottle then? Maybe I misunderstood something there, which is fine. I mean, we, we pretty much know the murder method and the person that did it. If I get, like, 90% of it there, I'm okay with it. I I'm okay to get some of the small details wrong. That's a whatever. Yeah, completely empty. It's completely empty. It didn't the prescription bag added to the court record. Because, I mean, the green on the bag reminds me of the green bottle we gave to him. I thought it was going to be a poison content, but it could be the medicine bottle. Because he did say he steals from his customers, and he was a customer. So maybe that was taken? Victim got this from the doctor before going to Tris BN. The bag is empty. Oh. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence. Desperate, are you, trite? Double, triple dots and exclamation mark from us. Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? Found the lottery ticket. Nothing else missing from the crime scene. 
Well, I mean, didn't you just tell me there was something missing? Let's press this statement. Hold it! Hold it. The half a million dollar lottery ticket and bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. Who those two items are accounted for. But wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. The one the restaurant owner, owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? Card of Demise and Kaiba's hands. Draw until you have five cards in your hand during your fifth standby after activation. Sell all cards in your hand in your graveyard. Yeah, that card effect was ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think it ever triggered the other part of that ever in the show. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong. He alleged that's what it did. I don't believe him. Could you imagine being able to draw five? Could you imagine if that was in the real card game, how unfair that would be? You're like, let's see, maybe just put like, uh... Put like three of these in here, draw some 15. Oh, I, I guess in five turns I lose my hand. <laughs> right, Chad? Like, what a card. That card is actually cheating. I mean, the point of the card is you end the duel before the downside hits. Yeah. I mean, even for older Yu Gi Oh!, that's st still too powerful. Imagine how many Summon Skulls and Blue Eyes White Dragons you could spam chat with that much card draw. Put on the, uh, what's it called? The, the 1000 ATP Axe Magic Equipment, whatever it was. Or, uh, what is it? Mage Power. Mage Power was another popular one back then. Phoenix says, and they're just gonna let him get away with it? It was just one dollar, detective. Guess no one cares when it's that little. Good for Gumshoe. Axe of Despair, thank you. I don't find a hole in this testimony. The judge is going to hand down his verdict. Um, she wasn't giving us anything to work with. We can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Oh, yeah. Crush Virus was also super insane. Yeah, that's true. I like how most of his opponents had to specifically do something to stop that card from play because it just ended every duel, basically. If it's ever allowed to go off. Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Wow. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been. That was certainly dialogue I had. Um. Uh, we'll press about the bottle, I guess. So we're gonna say, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah! You nailed it, pal! Mm. Happens to me all the time. In a department party the other day when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes. What? Objection! Objection. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. Pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Oh, Zesty Key was also Star Destiny. We learned new things. Open Threat in Court. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, I'd love to if I have any. Um... Am I missing something? Like... What else do I need to do to advance this? So we learned about the bag. Do I just present it here? Objection! Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point out something to you. There is just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally! Getting all anxious is waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. The officers recovered the medicine from the scene of the crime later. Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trebien. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You are too cool, pal. Bang. Indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison. The victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. 
Victazone's prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. Well, Mr. Cato, what do you have to say to that? Ah, that's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? What is this? Phoenix says, New Year Odalarn... Odalarn... I'm assuming it's like a lar... Okay, maybe it's throat medicine or something? Odalarn... I don't know how to say that. This is a combination of words to me. Is that, I think like larynx, right? But it's like Odalarn... The G is throwing me off. Like, logical. Odalarn... Ongo? I don't know. That feels weird to me. I'm gonna give up on that word. But anyway, that clinic. Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? Hardly an illness, your honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Sir Alec found himself in a fight. Took a blow to the side of the head. Ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum. Then what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal. Not to be ingested. What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. Yeah, thanks game. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is. In very, very fine print. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trace BN. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe he would have eaten his medicine. Uh... It seems... Or is it... It seems this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. No. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. He's right. I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? I might as well push the issue. Only moments ago, Mr. Godot made the following statement. These Mr. L. Clark really applied some of his medication while he was at Trace BN. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. Objection! That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, the lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Objection. Objection. You know as well as I do that medication is irrelevant. Hardly seems like that prescription drug could contain potassium cyanide. Objection. Objection. Hardly seems likely the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ugh. Bang. That's enough. Mr. Godot. Is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Mr. Godot. Um, I, uh... I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo. Pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial at best. He has visors overheating, indeed. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial, and that is something that bothers me. Yay, good job, Nick. Let's listen to the judge admit he did a terrible job. Bang. The court will adjourn for a ten-minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's ne next witness. Huh. Suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Which is adjourned for recess. Bang. Burning ourselves a small break. But we're not done with the trial yet. There we go. <clears throat> January 7th, 11.03 a.m. Just a court, defendant lobby number one. I I've lost count of the number of cups. 
you. That was close. I'd rather him say finish him off than satisfy Murphy. I swear, there there is something in the translation where it seems to commonly come up in translations. I've never seen it more used than in context of things that have been translated from Japan. People shouting they want to be satisfied is not quite... Not quite interpreted the same way, I would say, in English. Murphy saying, uh, Kirk saying the dude chucked so many cups of coffee. I think he, I think he said 17 in the last trial. Murphy says, I think Mr. Godot is a transplant from Night City in the suburb of <laughs> rental coffee. Can him give himself arrhythmia? I'm surprised that hasn't happened, Kirk. Yeah, he's very cyberpunk, though, Murphy. You, that was close. Tell me about it. You nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I think it really did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. He totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He's backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. It really hurts this time. I feel like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. But there we go. There's the classic misunderstanding in the relationship trope. Poor Gumshoe. The next witness is going to be the old guy from the park, right? Ugh, I don't want to talk to this character. Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Love her waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's gonna be really stubborn. I and mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know. Yeah, he's a big old grouch. You gonna be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. Well, Chad, how long do you think it's going to take before he throws bird seeds in the courtroom? We might have to count in a number of animations versus seconds, because I feel like it's going to happen in the first minute. January 7th, 11.15 a.m., just a court, courtroom number four. Bang. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. The prosecution calls the lucky old-timer. Caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Name and occupation, if you don't mind. Name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Gee, no one would have guessed. Honor and duty are what make me me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell us, tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Ha! Ah, listen, youngin. How much... What? I don't think I understand his question. Let me read the question out loud. How much call do you think there is for Komodo and Bro Oh, Komodo and Bro Okay. Now I understand. How much call do you think there is for Komodo embroidery here? Komodo embroidery? That's what I do, or did back in Japan. Embroidered family crests on kimonos. Yeah, how much demand? Rick saying, I feel like he's meant to be a stereotype based on a Navy general or fisherman or something. I don't know. He's something. Blue Donna asking, what is that? Thank you, Blue Donna. He's back on point. Back in Murphy, allegedly, we are not in Japan. Allegedly. We went to the French restaurant that has the maid cafe. That definitely exists in the U.S. Definitely, definitely real. My ancestors were in bordering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. You're a dying breed. Hey, maybe you could embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, so much demand for that kind of thing here. I had to take a job working the cast register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. Men of spirit meetings and Magatama's made cafes. Wait, yeah, pretty much. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? That they sell jelly-filled donuts just around the corner? Oh no. <laughs> they... <laughs> They've been four kids censored. 
We were just talking about YouTube, or, or not YouTube. We were just talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. That feels appropriate. Oh yes, seeding some seeds over a cup of Java Chino. Seeds? What do you think these are? Hmm. Well, he just threw them, chat. So if you're trying to keep track, he just did it. I see. So, you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Thank you, Zelza, for the follow. Hope you're doing well. Did I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please, tell the court. We're all ears. Sure, sure, I'll tell you. Tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. What I witnessed. A young man was reading the sports paper. The servant girl brought him a javachino. She put something in it. And took one sip of it. Looked like he was in terrible pain and then collapsed. That's the servant girl right there in the defendant's chair. Remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. We're all ears and Kudo's all nose. Look at the size of that thing. It is pretty gross. Ah, as bad as the rest of them. I wish he'd stop hitting it with his palm. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses. Wireless and spectacles, I tell you. I excuse me. Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so let's think about his statements. Well, we already know he fixates on certain parts of the people. Let's press this, unfortunately. Hold it! You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you could identify her by? Refer to his maid, cross that waitress. Accurate. Particular features. It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her. Her, you know. She's practically naked in that uniform. Objection! Objection. The particular feature recognized about the waitress is... Her outfit? Oh, I guess if I could get him to admit there isn't ketchup on the apron, maybe we'll catch him here? But anyone can wear such a uniform. Even me! Well, I don't know if I would say that in court, Phoenix. Mr. Wright, please spare the court any further mental anguish from that image. <laughs> Damn, called out by the judge. Don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. Ah, there are other things I recognize about her, too. He's pretty sure of himself. What do I do? You gotta press harder. Sure, he's... He saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether that matress... Oh, excuse me. Whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Wait, right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you recognize about the defendant, I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. Ribbon her. There was a ribbon in her hair, and her apron straps were loose. Press. Hold it. Hold it. You seem to remember several details about her appearance. What about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Is it really gonna be something stupid, like the other guy escaped in a maid outfit? I really hope not. I mean, I mean this, this is stretching believability. Like, I'm willing to believe there's many reasons in which they allegedly did not see him, but this would be very exceptionally stupid if this is the case. I'm hoping that is not the case. Ha, huh. as if I wouldn't remember that. Objection. Objection. Witness noticed the straps of the accused apron. 
It's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. I definitely wasn't looking at her. See, Murphy, you... <laughs> You say that, but it, it 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 was literally that earlier, Murphy. It was literally that, that he wasn't looking at their face. And in the way that you think it means. That's right. I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. And Addie remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Um... The straps are relevant. Let's start with the waitress's back. The identifying features you described. Or all the things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Something wrong with his eyesight. There's just something wrong with his where his eyes were sighted. Mm. That is true. He's not blind like the judge, at least, I guess. Objection! Objection. Ugh. He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. This witness testimony, nothing but straps and ribbons. So we did see the other girl there. She hasn't come up at all. She, I guess she could look like the other person from behind. So is it possible there was like more than one Waitress was there at the time, or something weird, and we just don't have that information to make that guess now. Because she, we bumped into her earlier, and I can kind of see from the back that she could be mistaken for the other character. So maybe it's something like... Maybe it's something stupid, like they just, there were more than one customer at the day, and they just went to the wrong people first or something? I'm just trying to think what the game is trying to do here. That is harassment. I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observe from the front, that is, to your testimony. Hmm. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. If I can't find a hole in it soon, look at it even longer. Wasn't anything that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front, he says. Well, I think we got him. Let's go present the apron now that has ridiculous stains on it. Objection! Objection! Hmm. Mr. Kudo, I'd like you to please take a look at this. Gah, a filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like, just after he's done eating. Your grandson eats in an apron? Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. You think I forget something as dirty as that, hmm? Hmm. Well, you half-witted clot. Phoenix dot dot dots. Judge dot dot dots. Everybody dot dot dots. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half witted clock, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh. Just as you said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Hmm. Which really means if you had really seen this apron before. Ugh. 
Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Bang. Witness. You can't just oops your way out of this. Yeah, you're not Vicky. You can't do that. Ha. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Phoenix dot dot dots. Listen, Trite. Here are the facts. The day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. Hmm. I think it's opened it up there again. <laughs> that being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. Exactly. And that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup. This old guy was watching. Hmm. Hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. Alright, chat. So, so here's here's what I'm thinking is happening. I'm thinking the anagram of the victim's name is going to be important. So I'm thinking mirrors are somehow involved. But I'm not sure what is going on with it. I don't know if it's like... Maybe they had like a fake setup or something weird? Like, is it going to be something super elaborate? Like, let's look at the court record again. I'm just thinking about this. Because I was trying to think about how they wouldn't see the other people. So, like... Is it possible... Hmm. So, like, they could stage, like, a fake scene with the waitress with the other woman we saw earlier to set up the fact, but I'm not sure how they would get the other people to turn around. So the reason they wouldn't notice right away is because his name is a palindrome. So I feel like that plays into the plot. So no matter like how it's read forwards or backwards, it doesn't matter. Cause it just seems really weird to me because there's two there's a character that looks like the waitress that's now been introduced. Allegedly only one person was seen. The chef wouldn't have seen the initial incident. So he would not be per a person they need to use the mirror on. So the only person they would have to deceive would be the old man, I guess. So we don't know where the old man was seated. So for example, if we can learn if he was sitting at the upper left table or the bottom left table, that would cinch it for me. If he was sitting in the bottom right, then the mirror theory is shot. So I'm more interested to see where this guy was sitting, allegedly. Anyway, back to the court. Hmm. Hope you understand the gravity of this situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you may remember seeing. Hmm. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. And rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect work and order. can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what burger a customer wanted. He can't remember. Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Bang. Very well. Let's just test how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Okay, chat. So, so, okay. <laughs> so here's what I think happened. The chef has a reason to lie. Because we already know he's in debt to the, to the... Uh, owner of the tender lender. We are... I, I don't know who... I, I guess it's possible the scooter technically belongs to him or something weird. I'm thinking... Okay, so let, let, let's, let's try to big brain what I think is happening with all the evidence we've had. So we've got introduced a character that's not in the profile here. So we know there's a woman who looks suspiciously like Maggie Bird from behind. Because the image they showed of just the back of her helped sell it. Because they know that he's a pervert, and he wouldn't know, look at her face. So I think that's actually a plot point. So therefore, they staged just the poisoning with that person. 
I'm not sure how they got him to slump over, but that's a little less important. And then the chef would keep quiet about it and or help set up for it because of the fact that he owes the real killer half a million. So I think that is the murder scenario. I'm thinking if this is genuinely his scooter, the reason he owes money to what I presume is the mafia, because he's a ridiculous stereotype, is he crashed into somebody and owes them hospital bills? Is that what the plot is? So he owes potentially, I think, it would have to be more than the lottery ticket, I would imagine. So maybe... So maybe with like the... <sighs> Look at the other thing real quick, one second. Where's the... There it is. So we already know about his intent to get the computer virus, which is what I'm assuming it is, in order to make the money. Then they were having arguments about money, and that's why it's crossed up. So the 500000 potentially is for either the debt from the chef or it's how much the computer guy owed. So maybe he didn't owe a hundred. Maybe he originally only owed like a hundred thousand, but the lottery ticket would give five hundred thousand. I'm not entirely sure the numerics there, but clearly the ticket is why he died, because he refused to potentially hand it over, so he had to die so he could take it. So th that's what I think the plot is. I've thought about it. We were talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, but in the back of my head, it was slowly uh, fermenting. I suppose. <laughs> We're letting it sit. Tell us what you remember about the victim. So, I wouldn't have guessed staging the crime, but I don't see why else... If, if he's not admitting to intimidation, I don't see what else it would be in that scenario. So let's talk about the victim, I guess. There's another one of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. Broken pair of spectacles. The newspaper in his right hand. Noisy Brat kept rustling its pages. Oh, did he mean the weird scanner thing that the guy has? The young man was listening to the wireless. Remember that well. And the serving girl in question brought over the Javachino. Little Fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just now was to test how credible the witness's memory is. The funk level device, yeah, it's true. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Ah, uh, yes. Eat those no you know what types who are so vague about everything. How are we gonna handle this, Nick? Only need to do one thing. Just need to prove the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose. It's what I do best. <laughs> Okay, that made me laugh a little bit. Okay. So where can we hit a con contradiction? So I, I don't think I can present his profile in the spectacles. Okay. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and he kept rustling the pages. Listening to the wireless. He got the cappuccino. I'm gonna check one thing. So... Is it insinuating that if he had a newspaper in his right hand and he was rustling its paper... Was he doing it with one or more hands, is the question. Maybe the contradiction is... What allegedly is his free hand here? Because we just have to trip him up, so... I guess we have to present the coffee cup here to try to go along those lines. Objection! Objection! Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a war of testing the credibility of your memory? Because he also had tickets. There, there was a lot of things he could be holding with his hand, so I imagine we're bringing up that point. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you. Nothing.
If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. What the heck is this pigeon song? Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? Pointing to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand, while drinking the coffee with his free hand, which should make that his left. Ah, what is this, kindergarten? I'd like the court to please take a look at this. Oh, is it meant to be held by your right hand? Doesn't matter. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim, that's the mark left by the victim's lips. Oh. Oh, that's fair. I wasn't paying attention to the cup in that sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, there's a stain left by the coffee. If you consider whether that where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. That was, like, sort of right. I'll give myself half credit on that. But I, I should have been looking at the image more closely. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. I like that. That was a nice clue, actually. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Ah. Uh, I'm to pigeon song chat. Bang. Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had... Wait! You think I'm gonna stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad? You're wrong. I don't care about that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony. That young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. Good law-abiding citizen I am. is there, so... I don't see the prescription bag here. Hmm. I wonder if that's gonna come up in a little bit, actually. I was trying to think about it, where I'm like, okay, let me examine the evidence again. So... His face is down. As I said before... I wonder if something got mirrored. We'll see. I'm not sure what the old man was doing at the time. But I'm sure that'll come up later in the next trial. It's a dead, it's a dead young hotbot and you know spiky-haired Yahoo who are at fault. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Who, me? Thank you. Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. It would explain why his hands are mixed up. I'm not sure how they got away with... The mirror, I guess? I'm trying to picture what they were doing with it afterwards. I would love to hear what they did with this mirror, chat. I would love to hear what they do with this. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say! Bang. So I think this is another point in the mirror theory. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure, why not hear a little more? Oh, excuse me, one person's talking. Sure, why not hear a little more? Hey, Mr. Godot, if this is my 16th cup of coffee. Oh no, Chad, he only has one more. So this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. And well, I on Victor. Proceed to people. They should find him for littering, at least. Left hand or right hand, witness testimony. The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. Ah, uh, but see, this that doesn't rule out the mirror theory. So that would be fine. Kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. And he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. We know the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. Small computer monitor often used by programmers. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, ch chat, don't you use these all the time in IT? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we we just go into, like, the Apple store, and we just see people like this, for example. <laughs> just walking around. I mean, maybe nowadays we're, we're kind of close with Google Glass or something. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. 
Over, over 9,000 looking guy? Yeah, pretty much. It's called an HMD. The common tool in the victim's line of work. HDTV, DVD, CD. All these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. Oh, he doesn't even know about Blu-ray yet. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth. It's true. Doesn't seem to be lying. Those are the facts in good old black and white. Actually, I kind of like this one. I kind of like this one. I think I understand what it was. So, we were told that he has the prescription, right? But we also know that according to it, that it was being applied as a topical cream. So therefore, if the same hand that was touching it, which would have been his left hand, would have had it, it would have probably have been on the cup, right? If he had been touching his ear and the cup. So I wonder if we could point out the fact that if he was a, if he was doing something with his ear, maybe we could point out the discrepancy with this. I think this is where it wants me to go with this. Let's go ahead and present this here, since we know we know the reason he was allegedly doing something with his ear should have been his medication. So let let's see how he handles this when we present this. Objection. Objection. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there's something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you block me up if I'm wrong. This is less left ear n without a doubt. I only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo. The victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Yup, yup, yup. Uh. Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. So yeah. So it's like, it's one of those things where like, if he had been applying it kind of things, it, it would have been on the wrong side. That's good. That's what I want to see here. So, okay, so th I think this is another checkbox in the in the mirror theory now. So, I don't think he, I don't think the witness is lying because he saw a reflection of the other character. So that's why if he thought it was the same hand that touched the ear, then it would have been his right hand with the cup and right hand with the ear if I'm following through the logic of the story. So he got mirrored. So this checks out. This checks out with the mirror theory. I think we're good. Because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. <laughs> <P -p> pigeon! <laughs> Pretty pigeon. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. So I think we have this solved. Yeah, I think this... Okay, so I think that piece of... I think that whole thing where he said it was on the left side now guarantees a mirror was involved with it. So we had a feeling something weird was happening. We weren't sure if it was an angle, intimidation, or something else. Now I'm pretty sure it's a mirror. The witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind, which again would make sense if it was a setup for the crime. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot? Ugh. Oh no, we're making his visor steam. The coffee's escaping, chat. <laughs> okay, this phrase did make me laugh. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? Bang. This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows the victim picked it up with his right hand. Yep, that, that would match the right hand right ear. This is, this is making sense to me now. 
I'll never back down. I know I'm right. And he is right. The lad drank his javachita with his left hand. Technically, technically no, but yes from his perspective. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand, then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Objection! Impossible! The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Objection! Objection. Uh-oh, chat, the last coffee cup. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, your honor. No, it's relevant, Godot. Bang. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. L drank the poisoned coffee. Like this. Objection. Sadly, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied. <laughs> There's the word satisfied again. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You can't reach me from here. I love how the judge is, I love how the judge is actually accepting him being, having stuff thrown at him. Like, doesn't tell him to knock it off or arrest him. Just like, yeah, it's just another Monday for old judge. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, oh, you know, just whips and, you know, maybe some tasers, coffee to the face, whatever. <laughs> like, hey, I'm not the janitor. I don't gotta clean it up. Bang. I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. Judge doesn't care. It's not, it's not hitting him. He doesn't have to clean it up exactly, Murphy. Assault on judge, exactly. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Okay, so I have... Oh, there's a hold it. He said hold it. Wait! We stop now. Where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo. Thanks to that blue-suited young upst upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes now. Oops, he mixed it up. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've got my mouth shut up until now. But there's something else the court should know. Oh, we're actually not done for the trial for the day? There's more? Of course, all he cares about is me, 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 says the chat. Exactly. What? There's more? I feel like we're in an infomercial. Be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. I want another chance. I want another crack at you, you young shark. Funny he used shark there when we think the other guy's a lone shark. It technically hasn't been confirmed, but there's no way it's not. Me? He isn't, he's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Oh, are we gonna finish him? Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the Javachino you want if you come to my house after the trial. Maybe 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man. Bang. Fatality him, exactly. That's enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. Oh no, you bet. I'm having fa Oh no. Not Tales of Eternia. Never escaped that line. I can't believe this is happening. I can. This courtroom is a mess. <laughs> you better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? It's gotta be using some sort of infinite ammo code with that box of seeds. A little fourth wall humor there, I guess. Final showdown. Witness testimony. First of all, I want to stress this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of it myself. Young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his javachino. Interestingly, when they show his body, his left ear is on the table, his right ear is up. Interesting. I didn't pay attention to that before. That's definitely relevant for what we're going to talk about later. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the boss. He knocked it over right... 
He knocked it right over. Did he? I don't think he did. Oops. So yeah, chat. This is lo this is looking mirrored. This is looking mirrored. The table's not the same. Oh, that's like another piece. That's like three checks. I, I think it's confirmed it's a mirror at this point. It's the only way this makes sense. It broke and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Because he's wearing a bandana. Oh, it's true. I guess he chose to save Meryl in the end, I suppose. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? Judge dot dot dots. Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. Remember it perfectly. Eh, you're doubting me again. Doubting a poor defenseless old man. No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah. So what? Probably. That's all I can think of. I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain. That's why all you can... That's... Oh, excuse me. That's why that's all you can think of. Bang. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your final cross-examination, please. Well, I think we're just gonna fatality him to your chat. So we could see in the originals... So maybe what it is... We should... I'm not sure what the origin of the photo is. Right? Like, is this a photo of, like, where he actually died? Like, is, is it supposed to be there? Or is this a photo of the mirrored scene, is the question. Take a look at the photo one more time. I guess this has to be from the real thing. Based off of where this is. I wish he would tell us what side of- what seat he was on, because then we could just lock it in and we could have probably ended it here. Anyway, let's present the photo. Objection! Objection! Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Hmm. So what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there. Intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, granddad? Kudo dot dot dots. I'm no granddad of yours, hopscotch. Ow! Ow! Bang. Enough. If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night. Oh, he does care about the cleaners. Ugh. What is it now? I just remembered something. E yes, go on. Broken vase. Huh, <laughs> it was on my table. Wow. Okay, well, pff, never mind. What? Ah, oh, well. You see... It startled me when that young lad collapsed. Oh, so it was even dumber than the mirror, I guess. So he stood up. It must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. Well, at least we could get him to confirm where he was seated. Maybe if we go back to the restaurant in the investigation phase, we'll see the vase is on the wrong set of tables. I mean, in a way, this will still confirm the theory. It's just not as straightforward as I was thinking, which is fine. You can make it a little more complicated, but as I said before, I think this case is over. I'm very surprised we have not gone after the Phoenix Wright imposter, who, by the way, we don't have a profile of yet, even though we've talked to him a couple times. Whatever. The vase on your table. Bra, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it was on my table. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked. Uh, I did not need to know that. Everybody dot dot dots on that one. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kudo. You certainly earned your kudos for today. Oh, there we go. I, I knew they were going to draw it back to kudos. I called that out immediately. I was like, there's no way. No way they're not going to do the kudos. Because that, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw his name. Uh, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I... have it been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Oh, mere puns. Ah! Oh, wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh, yes. Remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wow, he's actually throwing someone out of the courtroom? Wait, listen to me! Damn, he just got... he got Thanos snapped from the courtroom. 
Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked. Judge, this is not any different than any other Phoenix Wright case that we've been in. When are we not sidetracked? And I am still not in a position to deliver a verdict. Dot 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 exclamation mark for sure. Should have thrown seats at his head, yeah. Not a drive-by seating. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony. We have heard thus far. Mark on the coffee cup the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand. And the earpiece, which was inserted into his left ear, out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick. You did it. I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. Dot 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 from Godot. There is one more thing before I call today's session to an end. Oh, one more thing, Your Honor? The witness we just heard from. He is most insistent that his testimony should be of use. So he summarized it accordingly into this statement. Um, okay. You may ha each have a copy of it if you wish. Whatever. The pro prosecution doesn't need props like that. It was really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies. My own, yours, and Mr. Godot's. Yes, Your Honor. Victor's testimony when the incident occurred, I broke the boss of my seat. I'm sorry. Okay, so now, potentially in the next trial, we're going to be able to point out the discrepancy of where he was seated. I noticed they very purposely avoided saying where he was seated, and they didn't put them on the map. Just think about every other time we've been in a Phoenix Wright game where there's a victim and or the killer. They're very clear as to where people were positioned at the time. And suspiciously, she is not marked on that map, and they are not marked as the witness on that map. So I think that's relevant. We're, we're gonna go with the metagame final check on this one. I'm sorry. This isn't a piece of testimony. I'm like a five-year-old's apology. Oh, don't worry. This'll be a key for later. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? Bang. That is all. This court is adjourned. To be continued. Okay, so we'll save. So we're going towards one of the achievements where we just try to get um, the chef to give us as much as possible. If for whatever reason I missed it, I can go back to this one later. There is one more point in my notes that the next time we talk to him, I'm going to have to do something similar. So I'm just going to brute force it. So I don't think I'll have the achievement until after we get a little further than this. But, if I miss something for whatever reason, I could go back to the other saves. Anyway, uh, that's my prediction for the next uh, little portion. I think so far we've only missed... We have, we, I think we still have the stepladder conversation achievement to finish, which we've been doing since the first game, technically. Where we've been asking them to talk about stepladders constantly. Um, the one from the first game involving the meals in the fifth case. And otherwise, I think we have all of them so far. We got all the other ones from the second game, I'm pretty sure. And the third game, I don't think we've missed one yet. So, I guess we'll take a little bit of a break here since we're at a natural stopping point. And we're, uh, it it's kind of late. I don't really want to continue past midnight with this. I think we got enough Phoenix for now. Hopefully you enjoyed Phoenix Wright and the absolutely ridiculous, uh, I, I guess attempts at them pretending this is somehow America, question mark. America with its natural known, uh, mountain waterfall, hermit villages, and all that other nonsense, the maid cafes, just like, okay. Okay, Japan. Mm-hmm. But that's all for now, chat. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. This game has no setting identity. Yeah, they did not try very hard. <laughs> they they just they just did control F and then uh control V for pacing in America to wherever Japan is mentioned. Although with I love with that guy, I would just like to say before we say goodbye, I love they completely gave up on even pretending he wasn't Japanese. <laughs> I do appreciate they're like, listen, this is unsalvageable. It's done. He's Japanese, he's gonna say he's Japanese, it's gonna explain things. <laughs> We we can't translate the Komodo embroidery. It's over. <laughs> just we're just moving on. But anyway.
Um, if you did watch to this point in the video or the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you again for watching. Hope to see you again in the next part. Um, they did name him Victor, that is true.